I'm here with Gary Tutu Johnson. Uh, take us back to the beginning when you started to play basketball. Um, I think I started ever since I was maybe like five or six years old. Um, I come from a basketball family. I got a cousin that's highly touted and notable throughout the city and throughout the U.S. Um, Anthony Jojo Hunter, that's my cousin. So um, all my uncles played basketball. I mean, none of them really made it to the level Joe made it. Like Joe, the most significant that come out the family. But basketball has just been in my genes, just been in my blood. It just was, it was just in me. I mean, watch NBA finals, NBA on TV on Sundays. We watch it, watch college basketball. So basketball has been my life ever since I can remember, man. Just coming out the wound, it's just everything just, just, just was, was who? So you said you started probably around five. Did yeah. you play organized or was it, did you play kind of uh, with your family, your no, friends? About five, just being outside, being out back, shooting the basketball in the milk crate, basketball rim, you know, things of that nature. Then as I got kind of got older, um, playing 10 and under. 10 and under. That's when you kind of started organized. Yeah. And who'd you play for 10 and under? Uh, I was up Emory, Emory High School Playground, played 10 and under, under, uh, Midge, Anthony Green, he was my first coach, like played tenor under under Midge. So that's when it first started. Like I started to develop playing ten and under. Then I played elementary with Trues there. I was on the elementary, I was on the elementary basketball team um, with Trues there. That was big. I used to sleep in my uniforms. <laughs> so I loved it, right? Mm -hmm. And that's kind of how it kind of the process kind of got going. So you you started playing organized at Emory. Emory at that time was a powerhouse uptown for basketball, kind of, I guess, all the way through high school, probably a little bit after that, too. So I know it's probably some other notable players that probably started with you at 10 and under. Do you kind of remember any of those guys? Yeah, I do. But, you know, most significant, the um, rest in peace, they're not here with us today. Um, mm -hmm. Gary Jordan and um, Dwayne Short, um, as we know, I'm friends and family, and it's Bam. So, right, Bam, we, Bam and Gary. Bam and Gary. So it was just me, Bam and Gary mm -hmm. of Emory. Like, you know, you hit one, you hit three. So mm -hmm. it was just us three just um, holding it down. Mm -hmm. So after playing 10 and under, I know Gary would eventually go to Paul. You went to Paul. Mm -hmm. um, Bam, Paul, too? Bam went to Paul, too. Okay. And, but I also know you from number six. So I guess after you kind of played with Emory, you stayed uptown, kind of played some more basketball organized with number six. Yeah. But when I kind of got to know you, of you, I guess it was you, Bam, and Chris Carter. Of Emory. Of, of number six. Of number six. Yeah. So what age group was that? I think uh, that was more so like, 12 and under, mm -hmm. 12 and under, and also um, 14 and under. 14 and under. Yeah. So organized basketball, um, I guess no real AAU, more so boys club back then, more so rec ball. Yeah, I'm rec ball most likely. Man. I mean, I didn't play junior high. Okay. Right? Couldn't really get the grades. Wasn't really applying myself to get the grades. But, you know, and Paul was big with junior high basketball throughout the entire city, winning the championships, things of that nature. So if you make it – Playing for Paul basketball team, man, you you was you was somebody, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Great coach Dwight Robbins, you know, teaching discipline fundamentals, and we're winning. You know, you play with Paul, man. You know, watching some of the practices, you, you wanted to be a part of that because it, it was like it was real basketball, mm -hmm. right? So you know, me just not applying myself, you know, you know, not being able to play no grade seven, eighth, or ninth. Right. So but I played for the I played for the rec. So even though I didn't play for the junior high, I, I still played for the rec. So I still was able to develop mm -hmm. basketball wise. It wasn't like I was sitting out not doing anything. So when Bam and Gary is playing for Paul, I'm playing for Emory. And so now I'm able to really try like not pass the ball to them too. More so now the focus on me. So now I'm able to just work on my skill, work on my ability, be able to score a little bit more, be able to get better. Mm -hmm. The whole focus was on me. I could just do me and just get better. So it kind of like, it worked out for everybody a little bit. But even at that time, basketball a little bit different now. You may not have played organized, but it was kind of a a, a, a huge focus on playground. So Gary, Bam, uh, some of the other Paul guys right after school probably coming right over to Emory. So you're still bumping with those guys. You're still getting that competition. Yeah. So it wasn't like you couldn't make the team. It was more so you just weren't focused. Weren't focused. Yeah, so. Yeah. And uh, Emory at the time was big, man. Like, mm -hmm. I mean, I'm going to tell you how big it was. I used to cut 
<laughs> seven, period, just so I can be the first one on the court. Practice that top of the key shot because if I know if I make it, mm-hmm. I could choose my own five. And then at that time, it was the big boys, like the men, they would come and play. Mm-hmm. So you may not get picked up. But luckily, I was pretty good, you know, skill-wise, that they would pick me, Bam and Gary, up. We would play with the big boys, mm-hmm. right? And so I would just cut seven period, make about 50 top of the key shots. So when my turn came, you was knocking it down. <laughs> I was knocking it down. I picked my five. So I know mm-hmm. either I'm going to play and then I had the best basketball. So even I'm going to play, I'm going to take my ball. And you added it. And so one of the two. Mm-hmm. And like, yo, you let us use your rock. Come on, you can play with me. You let us use your ball. So I kind of like work the system. But you know, also, I, I, you know, for some people who may not live uptown, they may not understand how close Emory and Paul. So you're cutting seventh period. You're walking right across the street. You're literally on the court already. Yeah. Like some people may not know that. But yeah, I do definitely agree with you. Emory was a powerhouse. You know, you had Fort Stevens, yeah. you had Tacoma, and then you start going a little bit further down to. Uh, what's the one with Jenkins and them? Uh, Upshur. Upshur. And those were like the uptown Rex, yeah. 7th and Then you had, you had Shep- Shepard was there, but it wasn't mm-hmm. known for basketball activity. Mm-hmm. You had Petworth, but and Revolt, mm-hmm. you know, but we didn't look at them other Rex as being a threat to yeah. us. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know, I know Toma. that. Yeah, I know that. <laughs> I know that person. <laughs> a lot of disrespect coming from that Emory. That's why I look back on it now today, and I definitely say that it was the mecca of uptown basketball at that time because a lot of high school players, especially going filtering into Coolidge yes. from Paul, yes. and then, you know, eventually the Rabo guys would yeah. kind of trickle in, but it was yeah. really Paul yeah. and Emory. Yeah. And um, also had the Summer League, so I guess you were already bumping with the men. Oh, right. So you had a chance to kind of play in the Emory Summer League, yo, I guess. Yo, playing the Emory Summer League, I mean, it was like one of the – the best summer league, like during my my time, I mm-hmm. really didn't know of any other tournaments that were going on throughout the city mm-hmm. that had a significant impact and following and following right at that time. So you know, you, you had some some great guys come up there. Even you know, me being in middle school, mm-hmm. watching you know Kirk Smith come up there and play, mm-hmm. right? Watching him come up there and do his thing. Me doing keeping the scores table, me keeping the book, or keeping score, and just be able to watch first class basketball just to be able to learn just by watching guys because back then it wasn't the, uh, there was no berry farms yeah I mean, like, well there was a berry farms but it wasn't, it wasn't. the uptown tournament emory yeah. driving down georgia yeah. avenue seeing the crowd on the hill looking down this yeah, is before yeah, the yeah. new court yeah that was a real experience yeah. for people who lived up there yeah, you know and best and, and to my knowledge you know i always heard that berry farms was there mm-hmm. but it was a uh, in it was more community based. It was, it was mm-hmm. community based um, summer tournament, right? I mean, that's the knowledge that I kind of got from it, mm-hmm. right? So, but you know, as, as we know, it, it grew to be oh, something. And Emory kind of shut down, yeah, which is crazy because now they have that new full court and they don't use it for summer league basketball. And that to me is kind of, they could bring that back. So, you are right, at Paul, you leave Paul, you graduate. What's next for you? Um, well, one of the guys that lived uptown from uptown was uh, was assistant was assistant coach Owen McKinley. So I'm playing up the rack, I guess, playing outside, whatever was going on. So, and he sees uh, me play, and then he like, "Yo, you going to Tech?" But but long and behold, really, I come from that side. Right. Right. So I grew up on that side. On the northeast side. Twenty two T Street. Okay. So that's my family house, and my cousin was like that. Rest in peace. He went to Langley. Was like that. Uh, play that tech. He was like that. And honestly, I mean, to be honest, to keep it real, right? I mean, like, he used to job kick my butt. Mm-hmm. So I said, take all his moves and go uptown with it. Mm-hmm. Right? But people in the city kind of knew my cousin to play. Greg knew him. Every people knew him, right? Mm-hmm. So, flute with the spin gone. So, really, on the weekends, I would go to my grandmother's house and he, he would hand it to me a little bit. And then I would go uptown mm-hmm. and give it to them. So the same thing he do to me, I would do to them. <laughs> so you mm-hmm. so you follow what I'm saying? And every time he's like, oh, you nice, you nice, you nice. And I used to always tell people, like, yo, mm-hmm. you got to see my cousin. Your cousin. You, you, know, you, know, you know what I'm saying? And so the coach seen me, like, yo, you can go to Tech, X, Y, and Z. And then my grandma was against it. She's like, oh, no, I ain't having you come over here. Because, you know, of my experience with Paul and academics really wasn't working well at the time. And she's like, oh, no, nah, I don't need that headache. But long story short, when the McKinley played summer league, played did really, really well. Played varsity, 10th grade, started in the 10th. Mm-hmm. Actually, because my cousin had the grades first half. So I flew in 
started as a 10th grader and that's how I got to tech my 10th grade year. So I kind of want to go back. So I, I know how close you, Bam, and Gary were. Mm -hmm. Was there any, ever any talks of y'all possibly playing in high school together? Because I know Bam Cardoza, right? Yeah. Gary Coolidge, you tech. Gary went to Rose. He went to Rose first? Yeah, Gary went to Rose. And then Gary, Rose wasn't working out for my damn thing. Gary to transfer to Coolidge. To, uh, to a Maryland school. Right? And then Coolidge? I believe so, right? Mm -hmm. Or probably went to Coolidge first. Didn't like Coolidge. Mm -hmm. Then went to Rose. Then went to a Maryland school. Mm -hmm. Then like the Maryland school. And then came to Rose. Mm -hmm. You follow what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, uh, but no, actually it was supposed to, because we dominated so much with the rec ball, me, Bam, and Gary. Mm -hmm. The focus was us coming up to Paul. Okay. And then doing that thing, right? So mm -hmm. I don't, I think the only one, I'm not really, I think Bam played one year, Paul. Mm -hmm. I think Gary probably played all three. Right. So I think Gary's the only one that kind of like really. Stuck with it at Paul. Stuck with it at, 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 at Paul. So no real talks of possibly you three reuniting in high school. You kind of all just went your separate ways and yeah, because every, uh, yeah, we kind of went our separate ways because I guess everybody basketball dynamics were starting to change and shift, mm -hmm. right? And um, I think to be honest, like my my focus was straight basketball. Mm -hmm. So whether I play organized middle school or not, junior high or not, my basketball, it was, 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 well, my focus on hoop was, 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 was key, right? Yeah. Well, I didn't have like other distractions that maybe them two probably had faced. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. And so I continued to get better, mm -hmm. get better and get better. And then I guess came to a point where, you know, my game and my focus was a little bit more, was, was, was starting to grow more than the other two, the other two possibly. So yeah, McKinley, freshman, uh, excuse me, sophomore year, you start yeah. 11th grade year. 11th grade year, the coach got fired. Mr. Steve Miner got fired at Tech. And, and by that time, we already had moved around 21st. Okay. 21st and I, right? And then I was like, well, I'm going to go to Spingarn because my cousin was at Spingarn. Mm -hmm. So funny story. I'm over there, so I knew that the coach that just got fired, his brother, Wesley Milam, was coaching spin mm -hmm. So we just could keep it all in the family, right? So he left me in the gym for like three hours, two hours. He was like, yo, give me a thousand passes on a toss back machine. <laughs> I'm like, what? Well, I probably did maybe like 50, trying to mm -hmm. get better, whatever the coach say. And I was in that gym by myself. I like rolled out. I said, nah, uh -uh. I'm yeah. going to film. So, so you went literally next door. Instead of Spain. And Phelps wasn't really known no as a as a powerhouse at oh, that particular time. But that time. during that time, though, that time. you, I'm sure, I, I remember you kind of helped shift that. Not so let's that talk time. about that. So 11th grade year. Yeah. And so I didn't play 11th grade. I actually met a guy on the team, right, you know, kind of got an altercation, mm -hmm. you know, got an altercation. So I kind of, I kind of, the coach kind of favored that guy mm -hmm. because I guess he was a star player at the time, mm -hmm. right? And so, and I was like, well, guess what? I ain't going to play Vossi. I'm going to play JV and just average 40. So you played JV in the left. He didn't let me play JV. He said, no, you can't play JV. Because you played Varsity of Tech, right? Y yeah, but he was just saying I couldn't play JV, period, if I wasn't playing Vossi. Varsity. Oh, okay. So he kind of so black he, he, he was fake. Yeah. Right? <laughs> you know, so didn't play 11th grade. But what happened was I played on number 14, Boys Club. Mm. So when I used to go over there and play Spurnley, and then Neil from number six mm -hmm. had went over number 14 as like their director. Mm -hmm. So when I go in there, I know Neil, mm -hmm. right, from uptown. And then I'm playing in the gym with a woman. So Neil, like, yo, too, you got to play with us. You're not playing, come play with us. So I had a great coach over there named LaVey, took me under his wing, picked me up, go to practice. And now this my 11th grade year. This was one of the best basketball experiences I ever had because we had guys that could have played on inner high teams. Yeah. From all parts of the city, especially mm -hmm. on that northeast side, Civil City, Kenilworth, mm -hmm. Mayfair, mm -hmm. right? Uh, Paradise, Minnesota Avenue, or some of these guys can do it. But they just may not have had the grades. Or whatever yeah. the case may be, right? And we were all on one team, mm -hmm. number 14 Boys Club. I think we was playing 16 and under. And we was the champs. We beat everybody. We would have beat some high school teams. Yeah. Yo, I mean, as a term they say, cliche, 
we were about that life. I, I don't think people really realize how strong rec ball used to be in D.C. I kind of remember some of those teams that you played on and some of the talent, like you said, definitely could have played in the inner high, played in privates, played anywhere in the area. Yo. But for whatever reasons, you Man. know, and yeah. they still gravitated yeah. to playing. So we was like good. We was like that. And so even still again, right, you know, as fake destiny has it, I'm not playing for the high school, but I'm still rocking. You're still getting better. So I'm still playing, right? Mm -hmm. I'm still playing. I'm still playing. You know, just not playing inner high, but we got to play number two today. Mm -hmm. Got to play number four tomorrow, mm -hmm. right? Got to go see number nine. Got to go play number eight. Mm -hmm. So we still rocking and rolling. And we're, and we're going out of town also, playing mm -hmm. in the PAL, Police Athletic League. So mm -hmm. we're going to Philly to play. So, so we're still getting bumped. So I'm still getting bumped, mm -hmm. right? So I'm still able to play. I'm just not playing in the inner high. And that's my 11th grade year. So, and funny story was, so summer came towards the summer and then the, the team was playing, they was practicing for summer league. So I come in there in the gym, they don't have enough to play, right? Which team is this, Phelps? Phelps. Okay. So I got jeans on, I pull my jeans up and I start playing. Kind of like put in major, major work. The coach was like, listen, son, if you don't play for the school next year, you can't go to school here. Oh, wow. So I was like, <laughs> okay, stop faking. Mm -hmm. And then I played 12th grade at Phelps. That's so 12th grade at yeah. Phelps. Let's talk about that because that kind of put Phelps on the map during that time, yes. during the 90s. Because before that, they, was some trade. they were literally the trade school yeah. next to Spingarn and Stat nobody, game. exactly, nobody. <laughs> can't wait to play Phelps. Exactly. So you went to Phelps. In a, I mean, you started on the team in the 12th grade, but there were some other talented players there also. Because I know you guys had a three-man core. I think it was you, the big man. Gerald Hilliard. Gerald. And Lord Noonan, rest in peace. Yes. Right? So Eddie talk, Waller. let's talk about that. So now, 12th grade year, we play summer league. We're doing well, right? And then we're coming to the inner high. And so we playing. So, you know, we got a couple guys that were some great role players mm -hmm. that helped us along the way. But the focus point was just me, Gerald, and Noonan. Right. Yes. Nooney's playing the one. I'm playing the two. And Gerald is playing the three, four, and the five. Yes. Right. And he was a monster. We call him Big Horse. Yes. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. He's playing the three, four, and the five. Right. And so, right. And, you know, when you think about the game of basketball, you know, cliche is you want to win three out of five spots. Mm -hmm. So every night we could come in and compete because I'll, we can compete three out of five spots. That core. That core. Right. And so, did well. We played some good teams. We was ranked in the city. We beat like St. Albans. We um, is that St. Albans with Anwar? With Anwar McQueen mm -hmm. was like the player of the year that mm -hmm. year. So I think that's the game we beat them. I think we was ranked number fourteen in, in the city in the top twenty. So we were ranked and and actually we beat pretty much um, every team in the inner high except for Dunbar and Anna. Dunbar and Anna. Anna Costia. Yeah, but I think Dunbar and Anna at that time, they played for the city title, right? Yeah, and, and, I mean, not the city title, DCI yeah, the, yeah. And, and then we had a chance, and we had a chance to play for the city, the, the city title game, but we lost to uh, Dunbar. So right. that year you had uh, Dunbar was number one, Anna was number two, and we was the third best, the third team, best team in, in the city, right? Mm-hmm. So in the consolation game, we beat Sping on to be the third best team in the city. So I think – and Coach Jack, right – Got to give him a lot of props because um, he was such a great coach, student of the game, had Coach Ed Swales, that you know, a former all Matt, uh, played college basketball. So his insight to give us little nuggets of the game and what how Jack's put it together, man, like, I, I, I mean, we he got the most out the talent. So let me ask you, because I know you, you, had, you ran into Dunbar, uh, Pep Tyson, Claude Green, right? Nate Langley? Nate Langley. Nate Langley. Mike Gill uh, coming off the bench. Mike Gill. You ran into Anna Costia, Mike Powell, Keith Davis. Mm -hmm. So great overall yeah. backcourt players. Yeah, strong. So you're at Phelps, and like you said, the coach was really good. Mm -hmm. Did you feel did you feel you got better when you got to Phelps? Or do you think that you kind of just continued what you had going in rec ball? Uh, I got better. I don't I mean It wasn't the fact that when I got to Phelps, I got better. Mm -hmm. It was most when I got to Phelps, I was starting to showcase my talent. Oh, you had a better opportunity, a bigger stage. Yeah, I'm showcasing, right? Mm -hmm. It's like I always could play. Mm -hmm. And I always was good, mm -hmm. right? I just come from a very From a very young age. Very, yeah. very, I just always was good. But I was good on the, on the blacktop, mm -hmm. right? I don't come from an organized structure mm -hmm. of like how other people may 
come from that structure. But I'm I'm a wreck, a wreck baby, recreation. I come from the street, right? Yeah. So I come from the gate. So I just always can play. But now when I get to Phelps, now I'm showcasing my talent, right? And so mm-hmm. you're talking about a kid that really maxed out his talent one full year, 12 grade years. So I always sit back and say, yo, you know, what if I played three years? Yeah. Three right. straight years of the same environment. Three straight years of the same environment. Just three years of just inner high basketball, right? Mm-hmm. Started on the tenth. I think that eleventh grade year, for real, for real, right? The eleventh grade year was have been big for me, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Because the thing is, even though I still was playing, but if I'd have played that eleventh grade year and had a pretty good year, twelfth grade year, man, it'd have been a real life issue. Yeah, you, you follow what I'm saying? A- absolutely. It, it would have been a real. It would have been a real, real issue. Now, twelfth grade, you know, did good. I averaged eighteen, right? Mm-hmm. Average 18, but I'm just saying, you know, even if I would have got that next year in, developing got better, man, I could have easily probably added an extra seven, probably could have averaged 25, mm-hmm. 20 to 25, right? Mm-hmm. But still was able to max out the talent. And, but we did good, man, for that senior year, put Phelps on the Mac, little old Phelps, and people respected us, and they knew when we came. It was a fight. It was a fight. Was we a got fight. Nooney, you yeah. know, we got Nooney from over 58. Yeah. Right? They ain't nothing but point guard. Central over there, yeah. point guard you over there, right? Mm-hmm. Some of the best point guards in town that can handle that rock come from that side. And he could do all that too. Yo, you know, mm-hmm. and he and he and he had that thing he, with him, right? He did. So boom, then you got me coming from uptown, right? Got the uptown game and all that. Moving over twenty first, getting that other element, that mental element, like we not playing no games, man. Just like straight to it. Mm-hmm. Like tie your boots up and like, let's get right to it, mm-hmm. right? And then you got Jerl. Coming from the other side, that Rosedale corridor, Hager Jamal corridor. Mm-hmm. So, like, you kind of got like three cats. That's kind of like coming com- to fight. That's coming. That's coming. Yeah, they are coming. And so they're the, coming at you. They're coming at you. And so you got to have three other people to match that. To match that, right? You got to have people to match that, right? Not only are we like athletically prepared to rock, but our environmental mindset with that mm-hmm. makes it really difficult, right? And so. Other teams that didn't have it, we could get there. But when it came to Dunbar and the Cons, they were very well coached. A lot of talent. And they had max talent. Yeah. They had the best talent around, mm-hmm. right? And so it's just the fact that we wasn't powerful enough to, to see them. Yeah. So we had Dunbar on the ropes twice. We had Dunbar on the ropes and Phelps. We had them on the ropes. Mm-hmm. Like, going smack at them. Like, it's on. Mm-hmm. Mike Gill come off the bench, score 20. Is, was he a junior? Yeah, no, he was a, a sophomore. He was a sophomore. Wow. Mike come off the bench, go for the dub. Mm-hmm. That dub killed us. Yeah. That cracked the game open, right? So I'm just saying, right? Mike mm-hmm. come off the bench. And then keep it one. And then we playing Anna. You know, it's okay. It's cool. We, you know, we run a little bit, but we didn't have an answer from Mike Powell. Right. I mean, we just, I mean, Mike Powell. Yeah. We didn't have an answer. Right? I mean, Mike's... I don't think too many people did. And they have an <laughs> At answer that time, they have an answer had, for him. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. like, like, you know, all the other people, you know, they were good. They played their role. They mm-hmm. contributed. But, I mean, we didn't have an answer for Mike Powell, man. So, 12th grade, any accolades coming out of Phelps? Oh, yeah. So, at my time I came out of Phelps, I was the... Uh, I made all in a high, mm-hmm. right? I made all in a high. And for Phelps itself, I was the most valuable player. Mm-hmm. For the team, for Phelps, right? I mean, pretty much, man. Everywhere I kind of like went, I was like the most valuable player. Mm-hmm. Like Boys Club, fourth number fourteen, Phelps. I was the most valuable player. Honorable mention all met possibly. Uh, I ain't make honorable mention all met, right? So all met. I mean, all, all inner high. Yeah. yeah, MVP of your team. Yeah, and so the okay. thing was, right? So coach, so I guess they at that time they vote for like I guess the Capital Classic or whatever the preliminary game, right? And so I guess Coach Jack kind of like argued why I wasn't chosen. Mm-hmm. And so they was like, well, have him come to practice. They was practicing up St. Albans, mm-hmm. right? He's like, yo, have him come to practice and boom, boom, boom. But I didn't go because you didn't select me, right? You didn't want to kind of play in. Yeah, yeah. Nah, man. Like, I just felt as though, man, like. You were slighted. Not even, I don't even, you know, they pick what they pick, but guess what? If you feel as though. I ain't make it. It's cool, but I don't want nobody to beg for me to get in. I see what you're saying. Yeah, you, you, you know what I'm saying. But Jack, like, yo, why he ain't there, man? I mean, he got you got some guys playing that his stats is better, and we won games, and we didn't talk. So why my kid ain't get selected, right? But so that's I think, what a good coach is supposed to do yeah, that for his right? players, All right? But I think it made a lot of sense because not only would it help me out, it'll help Phelps out as well. Absolutely, right? Mm-hmm. So but, thinking back on it, would you would you go? Would you go up to St. Albans? 
if you had to do it over? I don't know, man. <laughs> I don't know because you know me. I'm a different breed, right? Yeah, you are. So, so, so. Uh, since you were young, you, 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 you're definitely a personality that. I've always remembered since you were young. You've kind of always been this person. Yeah, and it's, and, and it's funny because you know me and Jones were talking about that because you know we had, when we was up Emory, mm -hmm. me, you, Jones, and Mo, mm -hmm. you, you, you basically were the same person you were when you were little, and you got me out of my character in an yeah. argument with you in that debate about Greg. Yeah. And me and Jones was talking about that. I was like, that's what two do, and he yeah. was like, that's right, that's what he do. I was yeah. like, damn, he got me. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, you know what I'm saying? And with me, man, for real, like you know. But people really don't understand, like, I, I'm big on integrity, man, mm -hmm. right? Integrity and dignity, man, and I'm not really going to compromise my values, right? That's you, just, you've been like that for a long time. Yeah, man. And whether, and a lot of times, man, you know, it could get you in trouble, right? Yeah. Or, or not Because people trouble. don't know how to necessarily accept it. Yeah, not, not necessarily accept it, and they don't, they don't really see where you come from. But, man, you know, not to get off subject, man, I come from a different place. Mm -hmm. You follow what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. things of that nature... It's dear to me, but by them not selecting me, I'm like, yo, y'all didn't choose me, so, man, I'm good. I'm, a, I, I'm, I'm, I'm good, right? So I was coming with some of the guys that that they did select it, that I could, I, I don't want to say that I was better than them, but I know I could compete with them, right? Right. So, which which was cool. Then left Phelps, and well, hold up before we move on. No regrets with that. Mm -mm. But I just before we kind of move on from Phelps, I, you're a person who spent a lot of time uptown. You're a person who spent a lot of time on the northeast side. Mm -hmm. Do you see a difference in basketball played uptown at that particular time and basketball played on the northeast side? Do you think it was a difference or do you think that it was basketball in the city was kind of just all the same? I, 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 um, basketball was the same, mm -hmm. but <laughs> – but mm -hmm. right, but right. Not saying one place go harder than the other place, mm -hmm. but going on the other side, mm -hmm. the it, northeast side, the northeast side, right? I think because the thing is, right, basketball is personality, right? Basketball is personality. That's what I come to know, right? Basketball mm -hmm. is personality. Basketball is identification. Example: Serena Williams, her personality dominates tennis, right? Right. So uptown, you, you you know, the way you live, mm -hmm. life is good. Mm -hmm. You don't have no issues, mm -hmm. right? So you, is, is that true? I, I mean. I know what you're saying. The issue is not the same coming from, all, from the other side. From some the, of the other side, right. Yeah, from the other side, right? Because I've been on both sides, right? Mm -hmm. Even though we still got some of the same little issues, but. but it's, it's, it's just it's, different. It's a little different, it's right? The mentality it, it's is different. It's a little different. different. It's, it's a little bit more, I, I mean, a little kind of extreme, mm -hmm. right? A little kind of extreme. But the thing was, the basketball was the same. But the thing uptown, right? We, you know, you got most people that live uptown that lives in live in houses, mm -hmm. right? They mm -hmm. live in homes, right? Mm -hmm. Grandma, maybe two parents. So it's cool, right? You still got elements of issues because you live up in the district. You still may be facing poverty situations, right? Right. Mm -hmm. But then you go on the other side. You got apartment buildings, people in buildings. Where, and I'm speaking where I come from, right? Mm -hmm. I go on that Ashley Cold Door. You. Carpenters, I street, it's palmer builders. Mm -hmm. Survival's different and it's heavy drug infested. And so it's so now the game where I come from on that side, the game is survival time. Right. It's a different mentality. It's a different mode. People go a little bit harder. People go a little bit harder because it's, it's survival time, right? Mm -hmm. Right. And so, 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 so my mindset and the way I rock and roll is based upon survival. Right. So that's, that's the thing. And that's the misconception where people think and they say, like, well, two is. Aggressive, mm -hmm. man. You knew me outside of who? Fairly not aggressive, mm -hmm. but, but on the court, yo, in between those lines, yo, mm -hmm. yo, because what I've seen and what I come through, man, it's only one way to go. It's you have to survive, right? Mm -hmm. And then so I kind of like transferred that mindset over to the court in order to succeed. And let's take a quick break because I kind of want to go back and I want to talk about that, that that experience on the other side. How did that help kind of propel you throughout your career? Yeah. All right. Just give us one second. So let's go back for a second and just talk about, you know, some of the survival instincts that you kind of got on the other side of up from that, you know, when you were living on the other side, not necessarily in uptown. And how did that kind of propel you kind of not only in high school, but then in the college, that survival mode? Yo, I, I mean, it's like, you know, 
it's just if I can soften this term up with this phrase, if I can just soften it up, you know, it's 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 the old cliche. It's like kill or be killed, mm -hmm. right? And and the expectation on the northeast side, you know, it was there's only one way to go. Mm -hmm. It's only one way to go, man. It's no middle, right? So you go, you 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 go, you go, and then they expect you to go. Mm -hmm. If you in the mix, man, it ain't no tuck your tail. It's no tuck your tail. It's no looking away. No it's, ducking. No it's, ducking. It's, 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 man, it's no ducking, right? So it's like it's only one way to go. And then on that side, right, you 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 you're favored by the stripes you earn, right? Right. And those stripes can be all different kind of stripes, right? And I don't want to go into it, but your stripes just earn different. Yeah. Right. Your stripes. Your your, your stripes just earn by the work you put in. Right. That's just how it works. Right. And so it kind of helped me because of the mindset was that, man, listen, man, my mode is, man, I, I'm going extremely hard. Doesn't matter who in front of me. And it's, it's, it's like, let's get to it. So you had that at an early age, that mindset, yeah. kill or be killed. Yeah. So I, I've always wanted to ask you, do you think that because I've talked to Jones and Jones thinks that he was, he's actually just, he was born talented. Mm -hmm. He was. He was born. But I've always wanted to ask you, do you believe you were born talented or are you a product of hard work? Like just flat out, this is what I'm going to do. Dedication, hard work, get in the gym, get on the court, keep going, work, 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 work. Like how do you oh, view no, yourself? Hey, no, like despite the game being in my blood and my DNA, right? And I tell people all the time, right? I, you know, I put work in. Right. Mm -hmm. I put I, I put work in. Right. So so the work I put in I, I and and, and I, I can't allow anyone to mm -hmm. take that away. Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, you can have your opinions of X, Y and Z, but I cannot allow you to take away the work mm -hmm. that I put in. Right. I just tell people often, I say, man. Greg is gifted, mm -hmm. but I had to put the work in. Right. Right. But. The work for me was was need to be put in just for other areas, right? Mm -hmm. Because for me, but this process where I was told later down the line by coach, we probably even saw it, but I just was a worker, mm -hmm. right? I just wanted to work. I wanted to get better. I wanted to get better. I wanted to get better. I wanted to get better, mm -hmm. right? And so it just I put the work in, so it wasn't easy, you know. I, you know what? When life's a huge life for me, ain't been no crystal stair. But I think also, I, I think the hard work shows because the dedication, and then we're going to talk about you getting the college major D1, power five. So you didn't necessarily play in junior high school, yeah. middle school, junior high. Yeah. You kind of didn't play in high school, but yeah. to your story then yeah. to go from that to where we're about to talk about yeah. is kind of amazing. You don't really see that now no. at all. Kids now, eighth grade, sixth grade, <laughs> seventh grade, all the way through are applauded they don't miss years but you know even living around 21st right or even up emory i still mm -hmm. want to call it by myself mm -hmm. and work on my game i still watch basketball up emory on tv and then go right on the court and work on my left hand mm -hmm. right i just see this stuff nba and then go right outside and work on it even out outside in the cold up emory shovel the snow mm -hmm. shoot basketball in my socks with, with, with the socks on my hands so it was in me no i believe it because i i've never i'm gonna be honest with you I've never been to Emory and you weren't up there until we got older. Yeah. Like anytime I've come down there to play yeah. basketball, yeah. you were there. And I can say for the most part, I've seen Bam there a couple of times, but, yeah. for, but I've never been up there and not, not yeah. seen you yo, up there. Yo, even when I don't know if he's 21st, man, I used to mm -hmm. shovel the snow, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, the thing was, man, I used to sleep in the bed with the basketball, right? Yeah. So basketball was my first girlfriend, I always say, mm -hmm. right? So it, it just was in me, man. It's just, I just, I just, Kept working, you know, kept working. This time, you know, I asked Greg, I said, yeah, man, Jones, how you shoot, man? Tell me the secrets, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, even with growing up coming in junior high, I mean, coming up in the city, all, most people that was like that, they my men. Like, like G. Jones, we've been, we've been best friends since 12 years old, mm -hmm. right? Boom. It's been times that I've spent the night over Moochie Our House, been on New York Avenue with Moochie, mm -hmm. doing basketball drills, right? So it's just like me getting pieces of people all over the place, right? Even seeing Kirk Smith up Emory rock how he rock, watching him and saying, "Yo, wow, mm -hmm. this is what is this 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 is the mode." Right. So, right, every time you get that rock, you got to get a basket. So, you know, taking nuggets from people, mm -hmm. you know, taking nuggets and, and then putting the work in, then putting the work in and putting it into 
my game and creating my own identity, not playing like the next person, but putting them into my game and creating two, two. Right. You follow me? Exactly. So Phelps is over. What's next for you then? What do you do? So I get a scholarship, right? They get an offer from Odessa College. At that time, I think Moochie's already at Odessa, right? Mm -hmm. So I get Odessa College. A pop, very famous Juco. Yeah. I think Larry Johnson, yeah, Odessa. Larry, yeah, Larry mm -hmm. Johnson, Odessa. Texas. So Texas, right? Texas Juco basketball kind of big. So Odessa hollered at me. Coach, I forget his name, sister, Coach Black guy, hollered at me. Woo, woo. So I'm like, okay, cool. And then another school came in called Frank Phillips. Juco or? Juco. Okay. Boy of Texas, right? Juco. I didn't, you know, we don't, we don't really, we didn't have internet, we really couldn't do research. So mm -hmm. you just take somebody's word. So the guy from Frank Phillips come. Right, guy from Frank Phillips come and say um, that he wanted, he like wanted to give him a scholarship. So I'm talking to him. So I'm like, well, I might go to Odessa. He's like, Odessa, some trash. We beat Odessa every year. Woo -woo. So I'm like, whoa, really? I I, I don't have no way to know. You don't have a way to validate. That. I don't have no way to validate that, right? <laughs> I don't know uh -huh. to know him, right? The man comes to the hood, comes to the house. Me, and my mom, X, Y, and Z. We walking down the hood. Guys in the hood yelling out. Two that the police. I mean, they don't <laughs> that's, <laughs> say anything, you know, of different ethnicity. Mm -hmm. That's the police, right? Mm -hmm. Right. And so, you know, I'm yelling back right now. It's the coach, but so I wind up signing with Frank Phillips. And once I told him that's the coach that I signed with Frank Phillips, he like, why would you do that? Mm -hmm. He like, they're the doormat of the conference. Oh. I say, whoa, wait a minute. Mm -hmm. I'm locked in X, Y, and Z, right? So. Do a year, do a year there. I do a half. I don't even do a year there. Some some situations happen right at the school with some guys that's from the area that you probably wouldn't know, right? At Frank Phillips. At Frank Phillips, right? Okay. Situation happened, right? And so I was kind of sick. I was like had like the flu. I was kind of sick. So um, I was in my room sleep. So I kind of wake up, look for everybody, right? So some of the guys is in there, you know. Being teenagers, probably they're not making the right choices. Right. Probably, is, you know, smoking marijuana. You mm -hmm. know how, how it goes. And, right. So I guess the resident hall manager, the people who monitor the dorms, smell the smokes come in here and, like, see everybody in there. Mm -hmm. Right. So, boom, off the break, you know, I, I wasn't smoking. I'm sick. Woo, 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 woo. So, right. So they're like, okay, Gary, come out, X, Y, and Z. They're like, Gary, could you tell us? You know who was smoking? I said, well, I don't know who was smoking. Right. I mean, I smell smoke like you smell smoke, but I can't tell you who was who, who was smoking, right? And even at the time, you know, one of my dear friends was in that room, and so there's just no no way that I was going to just give it up. Just just give it up, right. right? But they wanted me to stay, man. They really wanted me to stay, right? So that night we had to stay at the precinct. I guess catch the Greyhound bus home. You know, me myself and another guy from from the area, and they just kept calling the precinct all night. Speaking to me, they're like, Gary, we do not want you to leave. Mm -hmm. We want you to stay. We just need you to tell us who was smoking. So that's when the integrity kicks in and you're yeah. like, I can't do that. I say, man, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Right? Like, you know, I'm like, man, I don't, I don't, I'm like, I don't know who. I don't know. I don't know. So get home. To D.C.? Get back to D.C., man. This is like 93 October. Get back to 93. So same one of my buddies. Did you get a chance to play? Now, no, we didn't get a chance to play. So the season hadn't even started. Steven didn't even start yet, right? Did you, and just going back real quick, did the Phelps staff have anything to do helping you? No, nah, this was this this. this now nah, I think this came from Mr. Bates. Okay, a, I played AAU like, okay. for like a month or two months. Okay, so I think the Frank Phillips came from Mr. Bates, Executive okay. Three, right? They picked me up on a Saturday to play like a little expo, play a little game, and the Frank Phillips guy was there. So nineteens. 19, uh, 18 under? 19. Yeah, 19 under five. You, uh, not a lot of AAU for you? No, I played no AAU. Okay. That was the only time I played AAU was that senior year. Okay. Mr. Bates. But Executive 3, great team, though. Yeah, exactly. Great organization. Yeah, yeah. And I'm pretty sure you had some really good. No, we were deep. We oh, were... Is that the summer when y'all went to Hampton? Yeah, yeah, but at that time, I couldn't make it to. Oh, yeah, we played against Iverson. Yeah, me and Jones talked about that. We yeah. got to talk about that. We went to... <laughs> we, 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 yo, we, we, we went, we went. To Hampton, mm -hmm. that was an experience. Yes, that was crazy, right? Yeah. So Jones, let me just tell you what Jones said first. He said AI wasn't giving him sixty-two. He gave everybody sixty-two. He said he gave the whole team sixty-two. That's I, I could go with that. Okay. I Did you? Because I know you love the strap. 
Did you I, 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 jump I, out there? Oh, no question, right? The whole kick with that is like, I'll tell anybody, like, even then and now, oh, oh, it's 63. Oh, that's 63. I got probably 12 of that 63. Mm. At least you're honest. Jones, yeah, Jones doesn't remember at all. So, yo, right. <laughs> so, no, I'm going I'm to be very honest, mm -hmm. right? No, no, no. No, no hot sauce, no mama sauce, just straight what it is. Mm -hmm. I, I, I've been saying that since 1993. Mm -hmm. So I, I've, I've, I've got 12 on that. So just, just thinking back, did you think that he would become? Well, did you see that in him, or did you just think he was just a no? You a saw high phenom. At no, you kind of. I mean, you saw the ability. We didn't know who the guy was, mm -hmm. right? We didn't know who he was, but we when we got to the gym. We thought we was at the wrong place because the gym was naked. It was empty. Mm -hmm. It wasn't so there, right? So we waited like 20 minutes. So we know this guy come. He walking in first. Mm -hmm. her, gold, her and bone with the diamonds like Allen. I think I'm in the lobby drinking some water. He walking. You know, I said DC mode, like, man, who this, man? We going exactly. to get right at this dude. <laughs> right. Like, he don't even know what's coming. Right. Like, we're coming with that sauce, right? Mm -hmm. He got like 2,000 people behind him. The man is like Moses. Yeah. He got like 2,000 people behind him. He walks in the gym. He got like 2,000 behind him. But he got some other guys that play Major D1. Yeah. Uh, Tony Rutledge. Wake Forest. Uh, Damon Baco, University of Alabama. Mm -hmm. Right? Some little big dudes that probably went to Virginia. That Boo Williams. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So so they had a nice little mob, right? And we had a nice little mob. And we were we were stacked too, though, right? So you, Greg, who else uh, on that team? On that, at that time, you know, our original team, we, it was Mike. We had like three starting fives, man. You had when we first started, we had Mike Powell, mm -hmm. G. Jones, mm -hmm. uh Big Phil with the Penn State, mm -hmm. Joey Beard with the Duke, mm -hmm. South Lakes, South Lakes, mm -hmm. Khalil Shakur. Oh, from Blair. Blair. Right. Myself, mm -hmm. Pep, mm -hmm. uh Greg Williams, TC Williams. Yeah. All he, another all man player. He, he was a bucket for TC Williams. That's yo, no, <laughs> I'm just saying, right? Mm -hmm. so Y'all was stacked too. Man, this is stupid stack, right? Mm -hmm. Mario Williams. Lago, yeah, Arnett Young, Lago, mm -hmm. uh, 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 boom. So we, 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 we were who we had like three fives, right? Mm -hmm. We had like three starting five, we were, we were deep. But this team, I know, it was me, Greg, Big Lonzo Goldston, that won the championship with Pep at Fort Hay State, mm -hmm. right? D2, right? D2, yeah. he's from DC, right? 611. And so, um, Mario Arnett. And I can't really remember a uh, big Lonzo, another big, another Lonzo that went to University of GA, went to University of Georgia, mm -hmm. right? And so, but we go in the gym, as he comes in there, we don't know what's going on. And the thing with Alvin, it really was, it wasn't, it wasn't like his J was flashy, X, Y, Z. He just was running all over the place, athletic, man. Yeah, speed. Speed, and I'm talking about, and bouncy, mm -hmm. right? And that's the time where I've really seen a guard get bouncy. Yeah, because we didn't really have a lot of bouncy guards uh -uh. in DC at uh -uh. this time. And even still at that time, bouncy wasn't wasn't looked at like as a guard you must have like today. Yeah. Today's guard, you gotta be bouncy. More crafty back then. Yeah, mm -hmm. more more self crafty, give me a basket, mm -hmm. right? But he was running around just real, real retarded fast, real fast, and bouncing, mm -hmm. getting yams, catching off the rim, dunking, leaning. I mean, for real, for real. He the reason why I kind of started getting my get my legs to get, your, get, get my bounce together, on your ups too. right? Yeah. So you know, it wasn't the fact that he just was splash and slim. He was athletic. He was freaky athletic, and he had a little bit of bounce, man. And so, right, it was the first time that we kind of laid eyes on him. But he respected us, right? Because we was about that life, though. Go but going at him, keep the story real. We beat them by twenty. You did. You did. That's in the post. It's yeah. in the post. Yeah, we beat them by 20, right? Mm -hmm. Keep the story real. We beat them, we beat them by 20. And we had that cross going out there. Right. We, we, we had that yam going. And then so we were set picks. And he didn't have that then. No, he didn't have that then. So we were set picks for him to get on Jones, for him to check Jones. Mm -hmm. And he ain't want, he ain't, you know, as the young Tatane said today, he ain't want no smoke. He ducked it. Did he duck he it? it? Yeah, he didn't want to get on. He didn't want to get on Jones. Mm -hmm. Right? So we like, yo, get over there. Mm -hmm. he, he didn't want he you know he didn't want no action. And I always say, first play of the game, jump ball, the guy was on me. So when I grabbed that thing, I threw that big cross, left and right. Yeah, yeah, baby. Right? Get him with it. Of course. So what we do at that time, soon you get that rock, you throw one. Yeah. Let somebody know where you at. Yeah. Bro, I'm gonna let you know, man. You yeah. Some of y'all used to play around with people like that, just passing man, it back and forth, man, snatching. Baby, baby, my yeah. right? So and so he knew that we we 
we we had that work, but he was a special talent, and he was a special. He, he was just a special talent, right? We never really seen anything like that in DC. At yeah, that time. of that nature, right? Mm-hmm. So he just was a different breed. So you you're back home, uh, October. You said back home October, from, right? So from the JUCO, Frank Phillips, okay. right? So the guy I'm with, my man, my, one of my best friends, right? Who I'm with, Black Mo, right? So. Mm-hmm. His mom is like, she's going to Florida. So my mom don't want me to stay up, stay around Northeast, right? So she's like, go to Florida with him, X, Y, and Z. So at that time, Mr. Bates called where Greg was at, Jacksonville. Mm-hmm. Right? Another Texas you go. Jacksonville, right? Called Jacksonville. And boom. And I get, and in January of 94, I, I come home to back to D.C. for a little bit from Florida. And the next, like, two weeks, I was out to Texas. Mm-hmm. Caught the Greyhounds in Texas. So when you go to Jacksonville, you play two seasons? I play, I set out one year, right? I okay. set out that half a year. Mm-hmm. From Because that team was loaded down. They had Lamont Gundy. Yeah, there was a lot of DC people. Out of Carlson that I really, really respect, man, that he was really about that life. I mean, I mean, a lot of people don't say his name, but, man, this guy was was like that. Then they had Troy Wilkins out of HD West, and, you know, Troy like that. Mm-hmm. Then you had G. Jones, right? Mm-hmm. Then he had some other guys, and at that time, Jones was coming off the bench like six man. Jones was coming off like he was heating up. Yeah, he was heating up off the bench, right? He was a six man, right? Because they had some other guys from New York that probably was there before Greg. That was sophomores, right? Right. So, so I sit out that whole year, working, getting better, playing my man on my gunny one on one. You know what I'm saying? Working on my game, working on my game, and then that that fall, I'm eligible to play. So I'm a freshman. I'm able to play that freshman year, mm-hmm. right? So that freshman year, we had another guy come down from D.C., Melvin Crab House. And so he goes to the one, I go to the two. Mm-hmm. I go to the three. I mean, Greg go to the three. And then we we play, we play pretty good, like, that year. So, so is that one four-year that's JUCO? That's one four-year JUCO. So I, I, made all, I made all freshman team, right? Mm-hmm. East Texas. I made all freshman team, East Texas. But the coach get fired. Okay. The coach get fired. And then from there... Mr. Bates make another call. I go to Brown Mackey. Where's that? Salina, Kansas. So you go to Kansas. Okay. And so now, right. Is this a sophomore year for you? Sophomore year. Okay. When I go to Kansas, I'm the man. So it's just you out Kansas. No. Yeah, but I got my man Black Mo with me, some other guys. But we talking about. Is Mo my, playing? Yeah, Mo's playing alongside okay. me. Okay. But, but. This is your time. I, I'm the man, right? I, you know, I, it's, it's no G. Jones. It's no Crab. Yeah, those other scores. Yeah, other scores, yeah, right? This is your show. This is it. This is this is me, mm-hmm. right? And so, boom. So being able to play, being able to focus and work, right? You know what I'm saying? Um, that's how that I think that put me on the map, Foz. Notoriety on the JUCO circuit, as far as getting Division One offers. Do you think that you got better in ju- junior college? Because I've had conversations with some other players, and JUCO wasn't really a structure for them. Do you think that it really helped you, or was it just more so the exposure? It helped in a sense because it was kind of organized, right? Right. But the coach we had, Coach Flax, good coach, great coach, Hall of Fame JUCO coach, but. He lets you play, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Let you play. Then he had enough trust in you to say, "Well, listen, mm-hmm. I'm letting you do your thing." Mm-hmm. But you, he look at you, say, "Yo, what are you doing? Like, get to it." Right. You follow what I'm saying? So we, you know, so and he trusted us. He trusted us. He trusted our skill. Trusted our ability. But I was able to just like fully develop, right? Mm-hmm. But when you say fully, see, that's what I mean. Like when you say that, is it more so the platform where the ball is just? You can go out and do what you want, or do you think you actually got better as far as off the court drills, workouts? I, I got better because I still were going to the gym individually. Did you right? have it's just open to you? You could get in there and do yeah, whatever. Yeah, we had like a little YMCA, so I could go in there and work on my game. And we did that even at Jacksonville, right? Going to the gym and working the game. So I always continue to work on my game by myself individually, right? Mm-hmm. Practice, you don't have time to work on your game. No. Right? Practice, you're preparing to run plays, structure, sets. Mm-hmm. You're preparing to do what the team needs you to do. Mm-hmm. So you don't have you can't get better in practice. Anybody match your workout? Any players on the team at any of the JUCOs, or are you just that gym rat? Because there's a lot of DC people at well the one stop 
prior to Jacksonville, right? Yeah. Anybody else in the gym with you as much as yeah, you are just out working everybody? Nah, Jacksonville was man, man. Well, well, Jacksonville, that year I set out, it used to be me and Jones in there. Okay. Me and Jones being there. And be ironic, we listen to Pearl Jam, right? Guns and Roses, shoot the ball, be dunking, working on dunks, like all that stuff. So me and Jones was in there hefty, like at, 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 at Jacksonville, right? Mm -hmm. And then me and Mo, me and, me and, me and, me and Mo, Black Mo, we were going to gym ourselves and working our game. So somebody was there with you, yeah. working, working, working. Yeah, I'm we just work. putting in yeah, work. Because yeah, I guess in some of these places, not really much else to do but get but, but get better, right? Mm -hmm. And then at that time, right, we got D1 aspirations. Right. Hunger. The yeah, hunger. so we got to get – so it wasn't really no, – no slight. So we didn't – wasn't no D2. That wasn't a thought. Nah. Because yeah. you got, we got Moochies at Auburn. Yeah. Right? Moochies at Auburn mm -hmm. working. So we like, and then we talking to Moochie, we talking to King Vini, he's at University of Lamar. We see our, we send our peers mm -hmm. on TV. Mm -hmm. And so we yelling, we next. Man, we next. A lot of people don't remember Vini went to Lamont. Yeah, a lot he, of people he, remember him from Marshall. From Marshall. Yeah. Right, went to the University of Lamar. He, he did. Went to the University of Lamar in Texas, right? Mm -hmm. They was the ones that was recruiting me, mm -hmm. right? So, so, so we like, yo, we next. So we trying to get in the gym and prepare. To, to to you could taste it. You, you know, knew to, it was it to, was there to, for you. Yeah, to, to to be next, right? So the whole dream is like get the D one. So uh this year, your sophomore year yeah. in Kansas, yeah. pretty much your show. Yeah. That's when you start getting D one offers. So what were some of the schools, if you can remember, that kind of were interested or offered? I, I had University of Houston because they were going into conference USA. Okay. And I think DePaul, Louisville, who them teams in that kind of forming that new conference, mm -hmm. Conference USA. Um Lamar was one of them. You know, they had Vinny there. University of Baylor was that Big 12, mm -hmm. right? Um, Seton Hall was a good one that, that I had that I really considered, right? Back on the East Coast. Back on the East Coast, and mm -hmm. then the people could come see me. But I'll tell you why I chose the school I chose. And then it was SC. So it was Houston, Baylor, Lamar, Seton Hall, and SC. Mm -hmm. you, know, you know what I'm saying? I had some other little schools, but, I mean, like South Alabama, all those things that that is, but uh, Wyoming, University of Wyoming, mm -hmm. probably Colorado, mm -hmm. like, you know, some of that Midwest. Right. So I'm getting all that Midwest action, mm -hmm. right? And so George Mason was recruiting me heavy. Mm -hmm. you, you, you know what I'm saying? American was recruiting me heavy. Back, back in the area. Yeah, American schools recruit me, but I figured that really, no slight, I wasn't going nowhere near them kind of schools. You know what I'm saying? I was yeah. going for the, the, yeah. the, 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 the gusto, but... Houston was intriguing. The, the, the assistant coach at the time, the recruiter, uh, Mr. Kirby, was man was a good guy. Came to come see me, develop a great relationship. So I really, really, really considered um, University of Houston. Right, really considered it. And and, and Lamar, I really wasn't going to never go to Lamar because I just think that that I, I I wanted bigger than Lamar. Right. No slight to Lamar. Right. Right. I just wanted bigger than Lamar. Right. Uh, Baylor, even though it was in the Big Twelve at that time, Baylor was a doormat. Okay. Right? They used to be doormat. Like, they're not the bill up today. Right. Right? And I ain't want to go there and just be, just go get my head bashed in. Every night, right? Every night. You know what I'm saying? But at the time why I chose bail, I was giving consideration because at that time I was thinking about going into medicine. Mm -hmm. And at that time, bail had one of the best um, medical schools in the country. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. And uh, Seton Hall was really appealing, right? Big East. We grew up watching the Big East, right? That's what we know. But then I was like, well, you can find me on every corner, mm -hmm. right? Back on the East Coast, East Coast guard, you can. Yeah, you I don't mean, really stand out on this. Uh -uh. Right? You, you can find me anywhere, right? But then I, 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 SC was major. Scott Alexander, the scout recruited me, was heavy. Rob Alexander liked me a lot. And I was just like, well, which the, 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 the decision became strategic because I was like, well, guess what? If I go on this West Coast, mm -hmm. With this cross, mm -hmm. I'm going to catch everybody off guard. And you don't find a lot of people from this side going oh, all the way on that side. That's what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. So I was like, yo, I could catch them off guard. Mm -hmm. They ain't seen this. Mm -hmm. And that's how I chose SC. So it was more so a, a strategic move, right? I didn't even know who, who SC had coming. I didn't know who was there, who was returning. So no homework. You just I, I, I'm going to SC, bro. I'm not, did you I take took, a visit? I took the first visit. That was the first school I chose to take the visit. Okay. So when I go out there, see the Hollywood sign, we fly in and the palm trees and the weather. And then the visit was crazy. 
I was like, any, any anybody from DC or that East Coast on that? The only one who was on that team was Roger Rose at the time that transferred from Kentucky, J- from Jersey, from Jersey. Yeah. And so he was my host, mm-hmm. right? He was my host. He's from Jersey, like yo, East Coast. So he showed. That's my one of my dear friends to this day. I just actually I just spoke with him like a uh, week and a half ago. Mm-hmm. So and um, he was my host, man. He showed me, man. Laid it down. We had a good time. Showed me the city of LA, right? And I was like, this is it. This is it for you. I didn't even and take another visit. Head coach at that time. Was Henry Bibby. Henry Bibby. So let's take a quick break because now we're transitioning into your college days. And I kind of want to talk about East Coast kid, part of D.C., going over to the West Coast. What was that experience? Was it was it a culture shock for you or did you kind of just relax and enjoy it? Did you love it? Because everyone says Cali is laid back. So let's just take a quick break. Sure. So you're at SC now, uh, Southern California, kid from the heart of DC. Um, what was that West Coast life like for you? Was it an easy adjustment? Was it hard for you? I mean, it was easy, man. I mean, you got to think, man. You you on a basketball. I mean, you on you on a basketball journey, mm-hmm. right? So you chasing. I mean, your 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 dream is coming true, right? Mm-hmm. Your dream is coming true. Everything that you've been through, you know, is was well worth it. You got to think, man. Me coming from the wreck, no junior high, mm-hmm. one year high school. What three JUCOs? Frank Phillips, Jacksonville, Kansas, mm-hmm. right? At SC, I mean, look at the journey, right? Mm-hmm. Untraditional path, right? So, no time to get complacent. It's still foot on the gas. Get to the lead. Right. It's the mindset, right? Make sure mama good, mm-hmm. right? So, um, hard work is paying off. Mm-hmm. So there's no culture shock. Out Cali, the women are beautiful. The weather's amazing. Mm-hmm. So the good thing at the time, you know, I got a Claude Green is there. Mm-hmm. So he's not on the team, but he's there. So he's giving me the rundown. Was he? So was he there before you? Yeah, Claude was there before me. Okay. So he was Claude Green from Dunbar. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, he was there before me. And so but he wasn't playing on the team at the time, but he's giving me the rundown mm-hmm. of what of what's up. Okay. Right. So I do got somebody to be in my ear to tell me pretty much what's good. And I always tell a story of growth and development. I remember our AD, our athletic director, Mike Garrett, he's walk across campus and he was like, um, son, what's your name? And I said, My name is Gary Johnson. So he's like, Gary, G-E-R-R-Y. I say, no, G-A-R-Y. And he was like, no, son, your name is Gary. Right. Oh, because you slurred the R. You're DC but, act. <laughs> but, mm-hmm. right, and I, and, I, and I always, and I am always um, transparent about this because this was a growth moment for me, right? He was like, your name is Gary. And so that's the first time somebody told me how to pronounce my name. Mm-hmm. So your name is Gary. So from that moment forward, I knew that I was in a different place. Right. And so from that day to this day, when they asked, what's my name? I said, my name is Gary. Right. So you don't slur the R anymore. My name is Gary. Mm-hmm. Right. So it was a moment of growth. Right. It was mm-hmm. the best place I could have chose because it, it, I mean, it changed my life. So SC, uh, Henry Bibby, father of Mike Bibby is your head coach. Bibby is actually in college during this time also. Yeah, Arizona. Okay. So let's talk about what, what was that like for you playing for Henry Bibby? in SC. So junior year now. Yeah, junior year. What right. did your minutes look like? What did your did you start? Did you come off the bench? See my junior year, right when I get there, it's like you know, when I get there, you got some seniors there already before me, X, Y, and Z. You got Roger Rhodes, Mr. Basketball out of uh New Jersey. out of Jersey played mm-hmm. a year. Freshman of college basketball played a year, Kentucky, a uh, highly touted guy, McDonald's All American, right? Then mm-hmm. you got States Bozeman, world class athlete out of state of L.A. out of Cali. Oh, is that that's the guy from the documentary? States Bozeman. Yeah, what's yeah. that documentary again? They, oh man, it's like him and it's that yeah, the Crenshaw like, Five. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right. So, States Bozeman, All American in football, mm-hmm. like that, mm-hmm. like that in basketball, Mister Mister Athlete, man, out of, out of the state of Cali. I mean, the man, right? Yeah, Mister Jaha Wilson out of Oakland, Dave Krause. 
So they, they got some juniors and seniors. They got some guys there that's they on the big time level, right? Then you got me there with a couple other freshman guys, Danny Walker that comes from like, he comes from, um, what's the name of his school? I forget the name, uh, West, I forget the name, but it's like a DC Dunbar. Okay. And, and he's a local kid. It's a LA school? LA school, Okay. right? And he's a D and he's a he's a LA kid, right? So now you got them and with me, Juco, Mr. Come up with freshmen, right? So now it's just like, and then baby, this is baby first year, right? Okay. This is his first year coaching the team. He was assistant coach. Now this is his show, mm -hmm. right? And so I tell a lot of people when I get there a little bit, I was basketball illiterate. I was basketball, you know, I say this quite frequently, right? Mm -hmm. Despite me coming home, playing at home and killing and killing in JUCO, but when I get to D1, I was basketball illiterate, mm -hmm. right? I haven't been in a situation where I was truly taught the game of basketball. I always played the game and that was truly taught the game so so baby helped you learn the game that, i didn't have a journey. choice to kind of learn the game because if you wanted to play you had to learn and what like when you say basketball illiterate like can you go a little bit more into detail like what was it that you kind of you didn't understand was it the structure of playing within the offense was it the structure of playing with other talented people no, no things just like right for one certain drills i couldn't do i didn't i didn't grow up doing drills okay right? i didn't been in settings where i would learn some of them drills right you is know? this individual skill work uh no it's like we, we, we in practice and okay. we're doing drills okay shuffle drill whatever footwork turn it turn it turn it uh i didn't i come from and hit the rock <laughs> here's, <laughs> here's the ball and get it done kind of roll it out and just yeah, go man see when it when it when the buzzer sounds right mm -hmm. so you know wasn't really taught and then like been in film session, he called my name, Johnson, go to the board, draw Utah, draw up Utah. The play. The play, mm -hmm. right? So put everybody where they need to be. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, I pass and I cut through. Mm -hmm. I scribble, I cut through. And he say, what the F is that? He said, how can I play you? You're the point guard. How can I play you? And you don't know where no one else goes or do. So you just really ran to play for yourself. Yes. You knew, you knew your movement. And yes. So, all right. So I can see what you're saying. Did, were you discouraged at any point or were you still so focused on next level that um, you thought you could get past that? Did you have doubts? Did you truthfully, did you have doubts at that time? Nah. No doubts? Nah. Nah, I ain't no doubts. I ain't no doubts. I, I didn't have doubts because when we play open bar, Mm -hmm. Man. No, I mean, not as far as the actual what you could do on the court, but I mean, as far as the the, liter the basketball literacy no, part, did you no, kind of no. doubt that there was the right no, spot no. for you? Or? No, because, yeah, because the thing is, even in drills, I used to hold up the drill, right? And, and I tell one of my buddies, Kwame, and I share these stories, right? I'm so transparent because the reason why I share them stories is because I'm now I'm back at my hometown. Mm -hmm. And so people coaching this type of way or, whatever, or the drills they may do, it's mm -hmm. not preparing them. For the, the next uh -uh. level. Mm -hmm. I, I just come through it. Mm -hmm. I, I get it. Mm -hmm. But that's not that's not what's needed. And so it was drills. I used to hold it, hold this up. Because, you know, you, you're in a time frame, mm -hmm. right? It's practice is scheduled by time. And so I'm holding this up. They're going to extra 30 minutes so I can pick it up. I'm not, I can't pick it up. So coach like Johnson, get some water, cool out, chill. Is it you by yourself or is it? Yeah, it's me by myself. So it's really the focus on you. It's, yo, you, I can't pick it up. Johnson, get some water. Get some water. Get to the side. Get some water. Mm -hmm. Anybody coaching you through that? Any assistants? Nah, I mean, this shit's moving forward. So it's, All the coaches like, hey. No, no breaks. They just they, full they, steam they, ahead. They, yeah, right. you, get, you're get, out of there. Yeah, you out of there. Okay. <laughs> you out of there, right? Mm -hmm. Come on the side. So what I have to do is, you know, get the key to the gym, go in there by myself. I mm -hmm. say so they were doing like this. They were shuffling this way. They were shuffling this way. They would go back this way. Mm -hmm. So I would have to go in there by myself mm -hmm. to get it down if I wanted to play. Or even going back to the play, because like, son, you're the point guard. You don't know where everybody's supposed to go. So now I'm being introduced to basketball, the class. Right. Right. 
So, boom. It, it, the whole team laughing. They laughing. Ah, they cracking up. Ooh, ooh, ooh. I'm the butt of the jokes, right? It's cool. But but, I, but you but what, the one thing I pick up from this is you reverted back to what the work. Yeah. You so, went and put the work in. Yeah. So I get the playbook. Mm -hmm. Find out where everybody go. Can't wait till next time he called me again. Mm -hmm. And that a week later, Johnson, draw up L.A. Okay. The one's here, the four is here, the five is here, the three is here, the two is here. I come off the double screen, the four and the five set the screens for the two. So now you got it. The two come off the scare, the, the staggered. Mm -hmm. The four and the five goes down, set the double screen for the three coming across. Mm -hmm. I hit the two, the two got the shot, or the two hits the three coming off. Mm -hmm. He says, son, good job. In front of everybody. Son, good job. How'd you feel at that moment? It was cool, right? I'm, you know where I'm from, right? It's a pride thing with us. Mm -hmm. I mean, you got me, mm -hmm. but you got to see me again. So now I'm back and I'm at my best. Yeah, you got to see me again, mm -hmm. right? That's what that's, okay, it's cool. But you got to see me again. That's the whole thing. So my mode was like, okay, cool. Next time we'll be ready, but I'm in a, I'm in a new arena. Right. I'm in a new arena. I'm in uncharted water, mm -hmm. right? I'm in, a, I'm in an arena in a realm where I'm not used to. Right, and now I come from being a man when you got other guys that's the man, right? So I'm in uncharted water, that adjustment. And so, let's go back to growing up in DC. And so, when you're in ch ch uncharted waters, only two things can happen sink or, sink or swim, yo, real live, right? Mm -hmm. Juco guy, all these people in front of you, they tell you gonna start, you're not, and, and you got everybody there. So, you were told you would start, yeah, you, oh, yeah, Johnson, you know how they do, they see the letters, yo, you're gonna start, you're gonna start, you're gonna start, you're the man, boom, 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 boom. boom. Right. Mm -hmm. And I always share the story, but I'm so transparent. Right. When the season start, you know, I, I may be like two steps from the manager. Oh, wow. Right. Mm -hmm. I'm like two steps from the manager. But Bibby's always say, son, keep working. When your time comes, be ready. Mm -hmm. See, Bibby know how it works. Since he played, you know, you, you know, and, I, you know, you got to think. Bibby learned under John Wooden, UCLA, 87, three, three championships, right? You know, NCAA championship, NBA championship, and the CBA championship, right? Mm -hmm. So his basketball stuff that he knows is off the chart, right? So he's always saying, Coach, son, be ready. So be ready. Be ready. I said, go hard and practice. Son, be ready. Be ready. Be ready, right? There's been times when nigga take the uniform, but the guys take the uniform off. I said, man, let me go get it so I can get some exercise. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, right? And I, and I love to speak my truth because, right, I dig my way out the tunnel. Any thoughts of transferring? Yeah. Yeah. I how, how far in when you started having those thoughts? Like this probably was like maybe like, say maybe like October, maybe November, maybe, right? Mm -hmm. call home so fa fairly early yeah. in the season. Yeah. I call, I call home to Ed Swell's. Who's our assistant coach at Phelps? I tell him what the, the drill was. So my thing was like, yo, I go to D2, lead the conference in scoring, average like 30, the scouts gonna see me, well, well, I can still get to the lead, right? He's like, no, two, don't do that. Stay there, man. Fight your way through it. Give it time to work. Mm -hmm. Stay. Coach say, keep working. Your time will come. Your time come, be ready. So in my mind, the hope was, yo, stay ready. Mm -hmm. Stay ready. So people got hurt. He wanted to put Danny Walker at the one. Danny didn't, couldn't play the one. Mm -hmm. Danny wanted to shoot that rock. Rob Rhodes was having difficulty at the one. He was trying to convert Rod to a one. Small four to a one. He was trying to get Rod in the lead. Kind of like a point four. Yeah. Six, eight, playing the one, right? We have difficulties. Then next, I was up. And ironically, my junior year, coach said, you're up. And then coach said, hey. See, coach old school. He said, yo, you don't give it back. That's one thing I, I – So he, he, he put you on the spot. He didn't break you. And then when you came back and you did what he wanted of you, he kind of then built you up. Yeah, because – He gave you confidence also. I, I just – I was raw. Mm-hmm. I was raw. You kind of you, and in retrospect, you probably needed that experience. Yeah, yeah, yeah probably, I was, I'm raw. Yeah, I'm raw. You know, you, you know the movie <laughs> Man on Fire. Denzel say to the young girl, "Train or untrained." Mm -hmm. I'm untrained. I'm untrained. I'm I'm raw. Mm -hmm. Right. 
Which is tough for a guard. Yo, I'm raw, it's right? It's very you tough think. for a guard to be raw. No middle school. Yeah. One year uh, high school. Juco. Mm -hmm. Outside all day. I'm raw. Mm -hmm. Just have ability. So, ironically, we playing Arizona. We playing, we playing, we playing, we playing Arizona, ironically, right? Again, is his son playing? Yeah. I, I think it's, what's this? I, I believe his son may have been playing. I think Mike stayed two years, right? Mike left a sophomore year. I can't remember. Yeah, so I think Mike left at the sophomore year, right? But then the first year they won the, did they win the championship the first year? Or whatever the case may be. It was that that your last year, I think they won. They won the championship? No, they were, well, the first they were year, defending. They were defending, right? Your, your senior year, I yeah, think. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. what I'm saying, right? So, boom, ironically, I had seven points, seven assists, uh, maybe, what, seven rebounds or something, and seven turnovers, mm -hmm. right? Is this your first start? This is my first start. Okay. Me kind of like getting in the game, playing significant. Mm -hmm. Right, so the assistant coach they had Damon Powell, great assistant. He was like, yes, yeah, coach, coach like you too. You know, you know, you want to just rub in your toenails. And coach like you too. You got the spot, don't give it back. Right. And I ain't give it back. Right. So how many starts as a junior? You can you remember? I, I think I started half the season. Right. I started half the season. We went to the tournament, and actually we tied for first place in the turn uh, in in the Pac-10. Mm -hmm. Kind of got like rings for that, right? You know, made a big steal against Washington State. Made a big steal to the Rob Rose. He dunk it. We solidified our place in the NCAA tournament. So, but my offensive role wasn't significant. Okay. So pass, play D, run the team, and so more of a point guard. More of a point guard. Mm -hmm. Open, hit the shot. Right. So pass first, shoot yeah, second. Yeah. So junior year, you complete your junior year. Um, you didn't transfer. Kind of fought through the fire. What did you do that summer? Did you did you come home? Did you stay on campus? Did you work? Like, what does your work look like now? Because now you've tasted starting at the D1 level. You've chased that. You got it. And they're saying, don't give it back. What are you doing to prepare yourself to keep yourself going? Well, I started, <clears throat> like, lifting. Now, I remember that year when I came home, I was, like, so jacked up off the weights. I was lifting weights with the football guys. Okay. Right? Is that what that did? Nobody told you that not to do that? Now, you know, you got weight program X, Y, Z. So I, I just was like, yo, I, you know, whatever it took for me to get better. The edge. The edge, I was with. So I used to lift weights with the football guys, man. I was just working out, right? Just getting my body right, just getting prepared to play. And then Coach Bibby was like, look, son, yeah, this, this you, this, 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 I'm in a position again where it's like, yo, this you. Mm -hmm. Senior year. Senior year, he's like, yo, right? He got a bunch of freshmen coming in, mm -hmm. probably ain't ready to rock and roll. He like, yo, listen, I'm gonna rely on you a lot. Like, it's you. Mm -hmm. So sometimes all you need is a little small words of encouragement, right? To to, to drive the train, and then he's like, yo, get yourself prepared to play. Mm -hmm. And so you know, I'm like, okay, you know, sometimes you think coaches of your coaches are your world. So when coach say, yo, get prepared to play, mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, now it's time to get prepared to play. I'm in practice, open bump. I, I, I'm I'm I'm. I'm, I'm, I'm crushing, right? He tell me what to work on, too. Work on your mid-range game, right? Get your mid-range game going. Slow your cross down. Don't do it all the time. You know, get your feet together. Mm -hmm. Get your footwork down, triple, triple. This is, this is Coach Bibby. Right, mm -hmm. right? Get your shit, too. You want to be a pro, this is what you need to work on if you mm -hmm. want to be a pro, right? Footwork, jab, triple thread, reverse pivot. Play the game with your feet. Put the cross over up. Told you put it away. Put it up. Mm -hmm. Save it for when you need it. Mm -hmm. Right? So, senior year, we rocking and rolling. We playing. I mean, I'm playing good. I'm playing well. Like, I'm, you know. And when I tell a lot of people, people really don't know, like, for the first, like, eight, nine, ten games, man, I was, like, leading the Pac-10 and scoring. Mm -hmm. Right? I was leading the Pac-10 and scoring. I was maybe average, like, maybe 18. Mm -hmm. Things happen. Dynamics. People go to coast, like, too shoot too much. You know, things happen, right? So, I'm trying to go revert back to like a little point guard role, X, Y, and Z. And you know Were you guys winning during that stretch? Nah, my senior year, we really had a, a great year winning, right? Okay. You got a young team, X, Y, and Z, but I'm playing well, right? Mm -hmm. And I and I'm drawing a little bit of NBA attention. I mean, scouts coming to the game. Mm -hmm. and coach people like, yo, too, they're here to see you, right? They're like two, you know, they 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 can't they're here to see you. I mean, by this time, man, my game is full throttle. Right. Right. It's, is this your peak? I, I, your college peak? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, my game is 
full throttle, man. It's like it's all come. That it's two moments where it all comes together. That was one of the one of the moments that it all came together. Senior year, my senior year, just just because of the work I put in, right? Mm-hmm. And it, it just it meshed. You know what I'm saying? It it it, it, it meshed. So playing well, coach, let me do my thing. You know. Yeah, IQ was up. My IQ was he, up. He helped you with that. He helped me. Yeah. He, 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 he got confident in me. And so now I'm in a position where, like, yo, son, go do what you do. Because mm-hmm. cause cause you've been trained, right? And so playing well my senior year and season starts all kind of like leading the pack in the school, like our first eight to ten games, and then the dynamics change. So you, you actually had a chance where – um you played against Arizona. You kind of snapped their winning streak. They had a 19-game winning streak. You ended their hopes of becoming the first Pac-10 team to go undefeated. And um, in that game against Arizona, playing against, I guess, Bibby's son, you had 27 points, five assists, and five steals. So in doing that and being in the locker room with the father and playing so well against the son, what was that dynamic like for you as a player and also him as a coach? Well, before that game, mm-hmm. That was the second time I seen them, but the first time I saw them, I was in Arizona, I scored 30 and 86. Right. Right. And during that time, I was like the first person that scored 30 in their gym. Mm-hmm. Fouled out with a minute left in the game. Their crowd stand up, stood up. Give you applause. And gave me a standing ovation. Respect. Mm-hmm. So I had to get up, address the crowd, give mm-hmm. a little hand salute. In a regular season game? Yeah. <laughs> gave my hand salute. I mean, you know, I give Miss Jones here, right? And I go sit down. And that was the moment. Mm hmm. That was the moment. That was the moment where I transitioned from playing to performing. Mm-hmm. Right. So it was no longer was I playing. Now it was performance based ability. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah, you're, and you're definitely still thinking about the next level. Yeah. Right. Right. So now I'm in, in, in performance mode. Right. And so, but that game you're speaking of, right? So actually it was like 26, six and six, right? Mm-hmm. 26.6 rebounds, six steals, six assists, right? And uh, that game was, a, that game, that, that, that that's the game I think that kind of like really solidified myself as far as the legacy of 2-2, two, because two, that's the game that was televised that people at home saw. Mm-hmm. Right, I get a lot of feedback from that game, and like, oh, you 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 burnt Bibby. Right, I've right. heard I've heard that story several times. Yeah, man, you burnt yeah. Bibby, right? And and people really kind of like honor that game. But the dynamic was, but I'm gonna tell you the game that I really like. But it just with the dynamic was it was cool, you know, coach. You know, coach like, look, obviously he didn't want the son to win, right? Because the media was all over the place. They were trying to create some narrative between him and his son didn't speak to each other. Right. Which was totally false, right? You know, coach would take calls from his son. Son would write letters. You know, coach would say, I got a letter right here. Look, what are they talking about? And so it was to a place that coaches wanted me to really play well because coach really didn't want the media yeah. to just run some wild. To, to give them the edge. The wild narrative, right? Mm-hmm. And so, and it wanted more so, even though, you know, I, 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 I told coach I got him, right? It was more so, though, that I, this is my measuring stick. Right. So I'm measuring myself against these guys. And at that time, it wasn't just him. You got to think. They got Miles Simon, who was the finals MVP. Right. Right. Went to the league. You got Jason Turd that went to the league. Yep. You got Michael Dickerson. Yeah. That right. went to the Small league. Small forward, right? Yeah, yeah. Two, three that went yeah. to the league. Right. As well as Mike. Mm-hmm. So, and they all got a piece of the action. Mm-hmm. Right. So it wasn't just Mike. Right. Right. I, I, I went through Mike so easy. They put Miles. They switched it. I, and I, I, one play, I came down through the right, left to right, through Miles, and to next week, hit the J ball. Next play, I, I come back and throw the right to left. Throw the uh, first time I threw the, I threw the, I threw the right to left. Second time I come back to the left and right, hit the J ball. The whole crowd go go crazy. They got him off of me, threw Jason on me. I guess he probably was a better defender. Went wild on him. Then they switched and then went bigger mm-hmm. with Michael Dickinson. Right, right, six five. They put Mike. Mike. Mike was talking to me. It's like, yo, I don't even know why I'm guarding you, <laughs> right? right. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? He's like, yo, I don't even know why I'm over here, right? And so after that game, you know, Lou Olsen came to me. He was like, Johnson, he's like, come here, right? I'm like, what's up, coach? How you doing? He's like, man, why well, I don't know you. 
He said, why we didn't recruit you, Mm -hmm. right? So I say that because it was, those were testaments to my ability and my and, and my hard work, man. Mm-hmm. That it was it was just being like recognized. But that's the game people know. That's the game people recognize. But the game I, I like initially is the game we played against UCLA against Vernon Davis. He's freshman. He's freshman, mm-hmm. right? He's a freshman. So like that game was like a herbal style game because I guess a lot of the plays wasn't working. And coach was like, now this was a time when coach was like, A2, mm-hmm. do your thing. Let you go. Pull that cross out because we need it now. <laughs> Let you go. <laughs> he like, we need it now, right? Mm-hmm. So he was, I remember one time, you know, he time out, he came to me he was like, yo, two, how many you got in you? I said, coach, man, I got like three straight in me. Mm-hmm. I got like three in me, three mm-hmm. straight in me. He like ISO me five straight times and five straight times I got a bucket. Is this who was guarding you, Baron Davis? Baron Davis, Earl Watson. Mm-hmm. Rico Hines, like I mean, you got to kind of got to take turns, right? Mm-hmm. Once you try to like in your in you and your rhythm, you and your bag, you kind of got to like take turns, right? And so I always say, like after that game, Byron Davis knew the guy Danny Walker that was on my team, mm-hmm. LA X Y and Z. I guess Danny gives him my number, right? And so Byron calls me up, like, <laughs> Byron calls me up, like Yo, G, man, I'm trying to work out with you, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. You like come up, you sell late, you know where you know where we from, like man. I'm I'm not the one jog riding. Right. You come down SC. How far is that commute? You know. It's from like Georgetown to Maryland. Okay. Okay. Right. It's like it's like it's like Georgetown, Ohio to Maryland. Okay. See, we're in the hood like Howard, but our campus is like University of Maryland. Okay. But we're just in the hood. Right. You follow what I'm saying? UCLA has the Georgetown mode. Right. See how Georgetown look? Yeah. Put UCLA there. Okay. But put it out College Park. Okay. That's Westwood. Okay. You follow what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. That's Westwood. So, and I'm like, now nah, you come down SC. Come down SC and work a little bit. And I told him the hands. You know, the little you told him the hands. Told him the hands up, right? Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Told him, told him, told him the hands up, right? So I don't say it's disrespect though, but when I played against them and worked in them dudes, little boys. Right. I'm just keeping it 100, right? You look at all they are, man, to me. Right. When I saw them, when we got to it, <laughs> they we got in the thick of it. Yeah, we got in the thick of it, right? Mm-hmm. You guys was no threat. Mm-hmm. You follow what I'm saying? And Earl Watt uh, and Eddie House got got a, got a piece. Arizona State, right? Arizona State, right? Mm-hmm. Career high, 32 points, right? Uh, I, I maybe probably missed like four shots the whole night, mm. right? Is that your senior night? Yeah, that's probably my senior night. So you went out with a bang. Went out with a real, with, 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 with a, with a real bang, you know? Mm-hmm. That year, I get the most valuable player of the team. I get the best defensive player of the team, uh, pack 10 player of the week, uh, scored the most points in the weekend. So, you know, I was being blessed, man, with, with some of the accolades just from the work I put in, right? So you got to look at all that stuff and reflect back, right? Where you came from. No junior high. Right. One year high school. Mm-hmm. At Phelps. At Phelps. At Phelps. At Phelps, right? Mm-hmm. Three JUCOs. Mm-hmm. Barely not playing. Can't draw up a play. And now you're busting McDonald's all Americans' asses. So you so so the journey, man. So mm-hmm. That's what I'm saying, right? I'm just saying. <laughs> well, let's take a quick break because you're finished with SC now, and we kind of want to talk about what you had going on after that. Because yeah. I know you spent some time playing pro. Yeah. All right. So you finished SC, and what were some of the what were, what were your next? So, and what, and, and the, the the story, right? So when I come out SC. So I got three teams, NBA teams that's interested in me, right? So I got Houston, right? They head scout Joe Ags, which my man's a good guy. Um, Vancouver mm-hmm. and Orlando, mm-hmm. right? So when I worked out with Vancouver, it was me, Paul Pierce, uh, Ruben Patterson, mm-hmm. and some other guy, right? Um, <clears throat> in Orlando, when I worked out with them, uh, it was just me and a couple other guys that I, I, really didn't, I really didn't know. So, worked out with Houston, right? This is when they had the Summit Center, right? Worked out with Houston. Boom, which was good. Then they came out to SC mm-hmm. for a private workout, right? And Coach was like, yo, too. You know, when they come, they had just took Roderick Rhodes the year before. Okay. Right? And so, Coach was like, yo, when they come in the second, man, they probably bring a job, like, interested in you, right? So, boom. All right, back. So what happened was, 
it was expected that Houston was going to probably take me like second round. Okay. Right. Um, when 98 come, they had the lockout. Mm-hmm. Right. They had the lockout. So now, but during the draft, this is what happened. During the draft, they drafted Bryce Drew out of Valparaiso. Yeah, he had the big shot. I remember him. Mm-hmm. Right. He had the big shot. Right. <laughs> then with the second first round pick, they grabbed Mike Dickinson. From Arizona. From Arizona. Mm-hmm. They grabbed Mike Dickinson, right? So now come the second round. So with so what they tell my agent was that um they didn't want to go small again. Okay. So they grabbed Catino Mobley. Oh, okay. They grabbed Cap. Steve was already there? No, nah, Steve was after me. A year after. Yeah, Steve, okay. Steve, Steve was Steve. Oh, Cap was there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah Steve Cap was there first, right? Steve was after me, right? So they grabbed Catino. But they, they said, well, we're going to bring Gary in, mm-hmm. right? See, my thing is this, just get me in the door, man. I'm, I'm a backdoor dude anyway, so yeah. it don't bother me. Mm-hmm. Get me in the door. Mm-hmm. It's, who's your guy? Is this your guy? I'm going at him. I'm, yo, <laughs> <laughs> so that's always been my mantra, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, cool. And I always used to say, right, no one asks, how do you get in the house, front or back door? All they know is- You're in the house. You're in the <laughs> house, right? So right. that's, see, that's always been my motto. Mm-hmm. They don't ask you how you got in here. Mm-hmm. All they know you in, right? So boom. 98 coming at the lockout. That killed me. So I couldn't go in as a free agent. So they only had guys that were coming from um that was that were uh has contracts mm-hmm. or got drafted. Okay. And then they, they played a 55 game season. They don't start up in January. Mm-hmm. So when so when that happens, I said, well, okay, cool, me and my agent, I'm gonna go to the CBA. Mm-hmm. Right? That was the D League back then. Right. The CBA. Contents of basketball associates, I'm going to CBA. So go to Tacoma, Washington, uh, play with the team in Seattle. I'm there probably about like six weeks or so. And then I got released because now the NBA players is coming to the CBA to get some bump. Right. To stay in shape. Right. Because right. of the lockout. Because of the lockout. Mm-hmm. So they come to get some bump to stay in shape. And so that moved me, right? Mm-hmm. That got me out of there. So I went to my hotel. I, I mean, I, and this is the first time I kind of like cried. So that it was a vet in there. He was like, yo, don't worry about it, man. This come with the professional territory. Right. It's going to be the first time you get cut. It's going to be the last time you get cut. Mm-hmm. He was like, man, this come with it. But I'm in, I'm in another place where it's uncharted territory. Right. Right. But I got a veteran in there that said, no, this come, this part of the business. Right. Mm-hmm. This kind of come with it. Yeah, I think, you know, after that, I kind of went over the water, like. Oh, so you played overseas also? Yeah. Okay. So I went over, I went, I went, and, and actually, when I first came out, I had $100,000 to play in France. Mm-hmm. I turned it down. To pursue the NBA. To pursue the NBA. And then the lockout. Then the lockout, right? Mm-hmm. So if I was to do it over again. You would go overseas. I would get the 100 and, and then get a little bit better, then come back and showcase the skill. Mm-hmm. But I, and I always tell kids that that's it. Don't just jump to the D League, but I know the D League pay a little bit more now, right? No. Oh well, it's just less than a hundred thousand. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Look, <coughs> go over, mm-hmm. get your money overseas. Overseas, get your money, then come back and pursue. It's a different hustle, right? It's a different game. So you got three hundred in the bank, and you play on the team, and you just work, and you have a free mind. Mm-hmm. Suppose it's playing the D League to try to bump and survive. Yeah, that's a different. That's a that's a different struggle. It's a different stress. It's yeah. a different stress, right? right? Thank you. It's a different stress. So I always encourage you go get that bag first. Mm-hmm. Two years, get better. You're in the Euro game. Add some of the fundamentals in your in your bag. Mm-hmm. Exp- expand your bag, and then come in that D League and go for what you know. Right, it's a different stress level. So I go overseas. Right, I went over, went over, went, went, went overseas uh, from. 98 to let's from 98 to 2003, but I played in the minor leagues first, right? It, you on the US, yeah, the US. USBL, mm-hmm. right? USBL, a lot of talented players in the USBL oh at that time, God, too, right? especially in the DC area, yeah. Mm-hmm. I played USBL, but I played away in Kansas, right? So my same Juco coach in Kansas was my USBL coach, okay, which was great because, yeah, if the familiarity, familiarity right? So it was showtime, right? Then I played in the IBA. International Basketball Association, mm-hmm. right? You got guys that Greg Jones played in it, Kirk Smith played in it, mm-hmm. some other great guys from New York, nice played in it. So that league was crazy, right? And, you know, played minor league, played over the water, right? And, um, and so when I came back, after, you know, a couple of years went over the water, 
I played in a little LA Summer League, mm-hmm. right? So one of my coaches for the LA Summer League was the assistant coach or the scout for the Minnesota Timberwolves. Okay. Right? For the Minnesota, for the Minnesota Timberwolves, right? So he invited me to camp. And at this time, I, I got – at this time, I got a deal on the table, right? For so Minnesota or overseas? Minnesota and the Portland Trailblazers. Okay, so two teams. Okay. So the reason why I'm going to choose Portland Trailblazers is because Coach Bibby played with Mo Cheeks. Okay. Right? Mm-hmm. Timberwolves are going in as a butt naked blind. Right. But worst case scenario, knowing the politics and the business side, mm-hmm. even if Mo Cheeks don't have a roster spot for me, I'm going to still be on the team because Bibby get the look, coach. The good look. Right? Look up for my man, right? Mm-hmm. So I'm, I'm definitely going to head there. So. And my thing is again, get me there in the door. And I work the rest. Show of the me world. who's your guy, right? <laughs> right? Show me who's your guy. Mm-hmm. And and my and I, oh, and my thing is that I'm gonna force the coach to make decisions to play me. I'm a, yo, mm-hmm. right? And the thing is, and 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 I can play D. Mm-hmm. So if you don't need me to shoot the rock, guess what? You may need me to slow down somebody. Mm-hmm. And so my value is much greater because I can I, I got a lockdown defense, mm-hmm. right? So boom, I show you the D first, and then along the way that O will get going. You know what I'm saying? And so, but what happened was, <clears throat> so I come home from that LA year. I think it was 2003. Come home on the Thursday to get like birth certificate, social security card, and I'm supposed to fly back out that Monday. I got hurt that Saturday down Upshur. Oh, that, that was when that happened. Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah, you know I was down there that. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. yeah, let's talk about that. So first time being injured, two deals on the table, or at least you know the Portland deal was on yeah. the table. Yeah. How did? Where were you mentally after that happened? Damn, man, that's a that's a good question, man. Like, <coughs> I was stoned off, right? How old, how old were you at that time? Do you remember? I think I was my like I was probably like maybe like I was probably maybe like twenty six. Okay. Right. So first time injured, 26. I'm like 26, right? Um, so I, I never really experienced depression. Mm-hmm. But I think when I first hurt my knee, I think I probably experienced it some, mm-hmm. right? I'm just saying, you know, I just felt like, yo, like, you know, I remember saying, God, you can take me now. Like, <laughs> yeah, it was that serious one. Yo, I'm like, yeah. God, like, I did it. Life's over. Yeah. You could, I mean, I'm good. Like, we could check out. Like, I've done it. Like, I've maxed out my talent. My talent is on, a, is a, is a, is a, is on an all time high. I've reached my full potential. Mm-hmm. Man, you know, I, I play professionally. I got paid to play. Reflecting on where I come from, I've, I've overachieved. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, man, listen, you can come get me. Right, he's ready to close it down. Yeah, I'm just saying, right? Not saying literally, mm-hmm. but it's like, man, it was tough. You could, we could get to it. Like, yo, I've maxed, I've climbed the hill, right? Mm-hmm. So, in my so, mom. so the ups were you just bumping to stay in shape, or man. was it a pride thing running with your boys? No, nah, like- just like, <clears throat> man, the love of the game, the love of the game, got it. Get some rack in, mm-hmm. right? Get some rack in, and plus. Show the homies where my where I met, mm-hmm. right? You know, you put you, you know, sh- 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 you know. But I remember going up the door. My mom was like, two, you shouldn't go play because you're gonna mess around and get hurt." Mm-hmm. Right? But I don't have no qualms about it because, man, I've maxed out, man. Like you know, I, I maxed out my potential. I sleep well at night because I didn't leave anything on the table. Right. I, I think that would definitely help. Yep. Yeah, when you know you're going 100% all the time. Yeah. If you yeah. went 50, yeah. that would probably right. kill the no average re- person. Ain't got no regrets, man. I ate yeah. all my food. Yeah. Right? I ate all my food, man. So, uh, man, it, it was it was, it was was good. It was good. You know what I'm saying? I, I ate all my food on my plate. So, you know. So, you, I, I'm, my timeline is messed up because I know you – I remember you down to Goodman. I remember you playing. Is that after? So you rehab, got no, back. I didn't play really after after that. All oh, that's that stuff was like during the summer, twenty seven. That same ago. summer then. I mean, just I mean, you saw that bump every year I came home. Oh, that's what that. Okay, so after that. Yeah, I'm never here during the winter. 
So after that, really nothing. Now, because I, because when I once I hurt the knee, yeah, the thing once I hurt the knee, I really had an injury because I was out of season. Right. So if I'm overseas somewhere playing one of the leagues or even in the, in the states, I'm being insured. Okay. By the team, mm -hmm. but I'm, I'm not playing with a team. Right. So I'm being insured. So what happened was at, at that moment of being 27, being 20, 26, 27, I set out for five years. Okay. I didn't touch a ball. Didn't play. I didn't touch a ball. For did, five. Did, so what was what what was the actual injury itself? I had a I had like the same thing started in my head. I had a micro patella fracture. Okay. Under the kneecap. Okay. Right. So I took off for like five years. Right. Overseas teams would call the agent and be like, "Yo, we want Gary Wu," and I never told him I hurt my knee. I gave him some wild story, family stuff. Just I didn't want. The information about he hurt a knee because you know back you know you're the knee damn good yeah right? you didn't want that to get out yeah I wanted to get out pretty much so I just shut it down for like five years actually which helped because the knee the rest the rest healed the knee what what was the actual rehab though was it how long did they give you as a time frame for the rehab I don't know man the, doc, the doctor told me that was I wasn't gonna make a play again ever yeah but okay. that you know God had other plans that was a lot because. I went into coaching, a coach's one school, and I started working out with the basketball team, started doing everything they were doing, lifting weights, legs, and all that stuff. And, Locally? Huh? Locally? Yeah, Thurgood Marshall of okay. Mother the King. So Char I started, charter school? Charter school. So mm -hmm. I started to do everything they're doing. The only reason I wanted to coach them, the only reason I, I took them, I wanted to coach, but another thing was, like, it could put me in basketball mode. Right. Working out with the team, doing drills, whatever they're doing, I'm doing. Mm -hmm. So now I can really get back now. Head coach, assistant? Uh, head assistant. Okay, head assistant. Okay. So so the legs getting strong and I'm starting to play. So I started back playing like when I was like 31. Mm -hmm. Started back playing. So went to basketball, went back to school, got my master's degree from GW. Okay. Right. What did um, you major in at SC? I majored in social science, which equates to a history major. Okay. Right? I was a history major, right? And, and then your master's in? In education and human development, mm -hmm. um, EBD, most baby disorder, so mostly like social, emotional development. Mm -hmm. So I I deal with behavior and how the brain works and how kids best learn under the stress, under emotional difficulty. So can we go back for a quick second? So that five years mm -hmm. that when the injury happened, you said you may have been you had never experienced depression but you may have been depressed yeah so that five-year gap never touched the ball yeah what what are you doing in that five years you because this is the first time basketball's never really been your go-to yeah but I actually uh i went back <clears throat> i got into education okay i got into education i had a degree mm -hmm. my first idea was i had a buddy that was from usc was a dear friend and he was a financial advisor okay and so he uh had a company, he was working for ING Inc. He's a financial advisor and I became his assistant working for him, right? Learning about money, things of that nature, right? And, and I said, well, this is cool. This really ain't for me. You know, I, I want to get back to my city, get back to the kids. And then from there, I went into education. Okay. You know, I started teaching. At my first teaching job, I was teaching seventh grade science at a middle school in Temple Hills, Sugar Middle School. Okay. Right? So seventh grade science. And then I went to Croom Vocational School and taught my field. I taught ninth grade U.S. and 10th, 11th grade modern world history. Okay. Right? And then after that year, I went to a program at GW, internship program, and did an accelerated program, went back and got my master's degree in education and human development. Mm -hmm. Right. So it kind of that that old cliche that the ball stops bouncing at some point, and you had you were lucky and fortunate enough to fall back on your education. You had your degree, yeah. and that kind of helped propel you yeah. through that five year rough yeah patch. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So went to teaching, then from there, you know, I got a job as a dean, behavior culture, and then from there, assistant school director. I became a vice principal of a charter school. Right. Mm -hmm. Became a vice principal of a charter school, and then. Um, uh, then became a professor, adjunct professor with UBC, right? So I, the same thing as basketball, what happened as I accelerated with hoop, mm -hmm. I was accelerating. In education. Education, right? Mm -hmm. And so, you know, developed my nonprofit, DC Empowerment, became a motivational speaker, you know, travel, been on radio, TVs, shows, speaking about youth development, mm -hmm. you know, young mother raising, single mother raising young black boys, the state of urban education, mm -hmm. um, poverty and education, I mean, maximizing learning opportunities right mm -hmm. 
you know, teaching teachers classroom behavior management strategies. So, so still, you know, being able to, the same passion I had from hoop, I got from youth development. Right. Right. You found something else. Yeah. But the passion was the same, mm-hmm. right. Just, just a different, just a different arena. So went into education, went into like youth development, you know, got jobs that's like directed student support over, you know, juvenile detention places. And so I just kind of like transferred the focus, mm-hmm. right? You know, and, you know, I just kind of like transferred the focus, man. Just want to be able to like kind of like get back. But I also took some jobs. I coached Coolest JV, right? Mm-hmm. Coach Coolest JV. So this is after uh, Thurgood Marshall. Yeah, it's after Thurgood Marshall, right? Coach Coach Coolest JV. Uh, coach Thurgood Marshall. I coach uh, Shugart Middle School. I coach Hart Middle School, mm-hmm. right? Uh, are you head coach or head assistant? Head coach. So what? What? So let's talk about that for a second. Because now after that five year gap, you kind of gone back into basketball. Yeah. Thurgood Marshall, head yeah. assistant. Now yeah. you're saying you're a head coach. What yeah. is because you're so driven? Yeah. What is Tutu the coach like? And what is he like for the kids? Because not every kid is going to have the same work, especially today's kids. They're not going to have the same work ethic. But you know the thing that kind of helped me for real, for real. My education. Mm-hmm. My experience, right, with the game, and my expertise with youth development. Okay. Right. Mm-hmm. So, by me playing, I understand the perspective, so I know how to get the best out of you. Right. Right. I know how to get the best out of you. So, you will want to play for me. Because mm-hmm. guess what, son? Do you? Right. Constructively, right? Right. We're gonna run sets. We're gonna run plays. You're going to learn, you're going to have IQ, mm-hmm. but do you, right? Do you. <laughs> Yo, she so. Yeah, the kids love that. Yeah, mm-hmm. do you, right? But do you in a constructive way. And and and, and, a, and do you in such a way that it suits what we do. Right. And I want everybody to do them, mm-hmm. right? But it's not. So play to your strengths. Play to, man, yes, play to your strength, man. Go get one. Right. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, I still keep the bath, the DC mode, go get one, but I'm teaching you your fundamentals. Right. So pump fake, rip through, jab, step, left, jab, step, right. You know what I'm saying? Step back, left, step back, right. So I'm going to give you those things. Mm-hmm. But with that, man, go go show the world your, your talent. So did you leave out any of the other coaching experiences that you've had recently? With my last coach experience was, was like Ron Brown. Okay. Like last year, Coach JB, right? Mm-hmm. And my thing for real, to be honest with you, right? And, you know, I'm wired a little different, right? You coach to compete, you coach to win. But for me, it's that's not for me, right? I, I'm not – I don't really care, man, if I was to ever win a championship. Okay. I care if you have the tools mm-hmm. that you need to succeed beyond. Right. Right. You mean educationally or athletically in this in this particular instance? Are you talking about athletically? Man, man, at both. Okay. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. Right. Just make sure that you emotionally prepared. Mm-hmm. Make sure that you that you you should be academically prepared because you can't play. Right. And then make sure you athletically prepared. Right. Right. So like that's just for me, man. I'm a little different, right? Because basketball on the line, right? It ain't about a coach winning the championship. It's about a kid getting out of this place. Right. Right. It's about a kid escaping poverty. It's about a kid escaping crime, violence. Right. Mm-hmm. Coming home, helping moms out, going to get a degree, which changes his whole life and his whole family dynamic. The information he learned, he could share throughout his household. Right. 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 So, man, I'm just saying, you know, you play to win and you want to win championships. No one's not playing not to win a championship. Right. But for me, man, I rather go over 30 and then everybody get a scholarship and go to school. Right. Just saying. Right. So let me ask you, because you were a player and now you've coached young players, what's the biggest difference you kind of see from players in high school at your time and high school now? That they're they're not college ready. Okay. And I and I, and I preach that. And even sometimes I post on Facebook, man. I say, man, you know, make sure that your your athletes are college ready. Mm-hmm. And the reason why I say that, you mean right, skill wise. Yes, okay. skill wise, man. Because guess what the thing is, right? And you know they're not college ready because we don't even have a lot of kids that's coming out of inner high that's going to school. Right. WAC is they going to school left and right, and they're going to top flight schools mm-hmm. because they're top flight D ones because they're college ready, mm-hmm. right? So, and this is the thing what I always say, right? College scouts that come into a high school game is not looking for a high school player. 
Right. When you're in middle school, the high school coach is looking at the middle school player to see can he play high school. Mm-hmm. Not saying can he play middle school. The college coach is looking to see if he can play college. And, the, and, and right, right. And the NBA coaches mm-hmm. are looking to see if this kid could play pro. Right. The NBA doesn't draft four year players. Right. They don't draft four year players. Rookie deal now. Yeah, we're looking for pros, mm-hmm. right? Who can play the pro game. So you have to be prepared for where you're going. And so oftentimes what I see, especially in the inner high, the kids ain't prepared mm-hmm. for where they're going. So you don't think it's a talent thing? You, I mean, think, it's, you think it's preparation? You don't think, because a lot of people believe that the inner high has been kind of ravaged over and now a lot of kids just go private. Yeah, yeah. I mean, which is, which is the case too, but also <clears throat> so a lot of you good coaches are some of my dear friends. And we had late night conversations, right, behind the scenes that no one knows about. And oftentimes, you know, it it, 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 it could, but you coach up talent. Okay. Right? If the guy's on the team, right, he's on the team, apparently he could play somewhat, mm-hmm. right? But are we taking the time? To develop him. To coach up. And coach him up. Coach up, right? Mm-hmm. Any place I've really been in, for real, for real, I've always did well enough to be in this competitive state to where is that I can vie for a championship. Mm-hmm. Whether I won that championship or not, it's another story. But you were there. One game away, mm-hmm. maybe losing a chip, right? And I've never went out recruiting. You worked with what you had. Yes, because guess what? I believe in my ability mm-hmm. to coach up. But, you know, for a lot of coaches, though, that's tough, though, because of the way that the – the things are set up now. Some teams just have so much talent at their disposal, and then you have someone like you who wants to coach up, yeah, 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 but yeah. may not have the most talented kids. Yeah, Every, coach everybody up. can't. Yeah, I, I get you. Now, and I always knew if I if, what I've learned from Coach Baby, who learned from John Wood, what I've learned if I was to have any kind of talent, mm-hmm. any kind of talent, it, it'd be a situ- it'd be it'd be a situation, right? Mm-hmm. So the thing is, I know in the talent kind of minutes, right, but I'm just saying, right? You look at Dunbar, Coach McLeese, right? You look mm-hmm. at Anna Hargrove, right? Mm-hmm. Them, them, them people had the talent also, but they kind of like coached up. Yeah, they they, they produced D college guys Players. that were college ready, mm-hmm. right? So guess what? We're not talking about D one. We talk about NAIA, D two. Yeah. Yeah, Are you college ready? At, at some point. Are you college ready? Right? Everybody ain't going D one. This is true. But I'm just saying, so guess what? Even are you JUCO ready? Are you JUCO ready? I look at some of these these games, I'm like, yo, yeah. I don't see who's JUCO ready, who's college ready. I ain't just talking about emphasizing D1. You got D2, D3. We talking about getting a degree, getting out the hood. Right. That's the focus. So are you college ready enough to get out the hood? So right now you're not coaching, right? No, I'm not. Is that something you want to continue doing? Do you want a head coaching position somewhere? I mean, some. I mean, really, I coach sometimes to give back, but I don't. I'm, I'm not into coaching. Okay. Right. I'm not into it. Mm-hmm. I'm not into it to be chasing it five, ten years. I coach for two years. I take the break. I get the itch. I go into it again. Mm-hmm. Take it all. Go, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I'm not there. All I want to do is be able to give to you what I've known and accum- accumulated over the years and share it and give it to you. So just going back, you didn't pick up a basketball for five years, mm-hmm. went to Thurgood Marshall, worked out with the team. Yeah. At that point, did the love of the game come back? Did you start to play outside of that? Yeah. Like, so do you still play now? Yeah. Or what does that look like for you now? Oh, yo, I still play, man. I still play. I still be, I still be active. Right. And so even actually before I came here, I played just, I played this morning. So just currently, you know, the last three weeks or so, I've just been back in action and playing. So I take breaks off, but I do still play, though. Mm-hmm. And you I, still had the same love. Yeah, the same the same love. I still put work in. Like yeah, That's what I ask you. Individually, do yeah, you still I, work on your game now? Of course I do. It's in me. Okay. So, I mean, just this past <clears throat> week, I was up Emory. Anybody can tell you, shoot on a shoot machine, man, shoot three, 400 shots. Mm-hmm. It's, it's in me, man, working on my footwork. You know what I'm saying? Running the steps, running the steps, jumping rope, doing yoga. How's the leg? The leg is good to go, man. So you're good now. Yeah, it's good to go. So, like, and for me, it's not about really going out and playing. You know, I'm so locked in in performance mode, just preparing the body to, 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 to perform. To perform. So do you play in any of the 
what, 40 and over, 30, what is it, 30 and over, 40 and over? No, nah, I want to, though. I think this year, right, I, I am about kind of like starting early with Mr. Ricky Goins where they got the little summer league. So I mm. think, you know, I played in a year before last, but I wasn't my best in condition-wise. Year before last, I played, maybe two years ago I played. But this year, I really want to. I really want to get really engaged, mm-hmm. right? I really want to get engaged and just get the body to be, be prepared to play. And it ain't about really going out there and killing. It's about just me at 44, just putting myself in the best possible state to compete. Right. You follow what I'm saying? My thing is with me is com- competition. Right. Just being able to compete. Are you going to be able to <laughs> – because you're such a competitor, how is that going to work for you now that – you're a little bit older and you may not be able to do the same things that you've done before. Well, are you just going to push yourself? What I'm really asking is, are you going to push yourself to your peak at this age? Yeah. Yeah. Because the thing is, right. And I, you know, the good thing is that I don't have a lot of wear and tear. Right. Right. Mm-hmm. You know, taking five years off, you know, I may work out for six months and the next six months, like just, just last past April, March, I was in blast, but I took on a, a project that took my time away. So now I had to, I, I wasn't able to get to the gym. Mm-hmm. And so now I'm back in mode. So the good thing is, right, I'm not in, I'm not in, I don't have a lot of wear and tear, mm-hmm. right? Because my body hasn't been through a lot. And so now once my body get back in rhythm, I'm able to do the things that I can do. Now I know I'm not 25, right? Right. But at the same time, I got enough upstairs to get uh, to your spots. Get, and that's how I play. So let me ask you. Um, done with the playground? Will we see you in the Goodman? Will we see you in the summer league? Or are you oh, strictly gym now? Now, once I heard the knee outside, I've never been outside since. That's it for you. Yeah, that, yeah I'll, game's over. So I just want to take a quick break. And I want to come back and I want to touch on street ball because that's a part of your career. We didn't even mention any of that. And I know you played a lot of that. So let's go back a little bit because we didn't get a chance to actually speak on your street ball career. Me personally, I don't – I, I've – know you play street ball, but I don't necessarily consider you a street ball player. I, I always kind of consider you a basketball player. When I think street ball, I think a, a few other people in the area, but not necessarily you. But I know you've been on the street ball tours. You've played in several different leagues. So, like, how do you view yourself as a street – as a basketball player that plays street ball? I, I mean, I mean, two things, right? I come from street ball, right? Mm-hmm. Street ball is a part of who I really am, right? My bass tutu is my nickname from birth, but everybody in the city know me tutu as a basketball as a as a basketball player in the, in the streets, right? Mm-hmm. So I never want to not discredit the street ball piece because me growing up playing rec ball, the street ball, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, rec ball, the street ball. I mean, not, not, not street ball with the and one tricks, not right? Not, yeah, but you playing, you, you ain't playing for school, right? So I, wherever we classify, is how we classify, right? Mm-hmm. Right, but street ball thing. I mean, you talking about the street ball and the circuit, you know, going to different places and playing different people. I didn't want to be limited, right? Be classified as a street ball player, right? Because I put too much work in to get my game to a certain plateau where I want to be considered a basketball player, right? Right, not someone who played basketball but a basketball player, right? So I didn't want to be classified as a street ball player. I just thought that just. For me, I am much more than that. I've worked too hard to become much more than that. But can I turn the switch on and go over there and do the street ball stuff? Yeah, of course I could. But can I hit the switch and go over here and play technically in sound? Of course I could. But see, here's my thing with that about that. So during that area of street ball, it wasn't really basketball. So how did that work for you? Because your love of the game, being so competitive, not being necessarily real basketball, more so isolation, tricks, you know. But how we play, we had the tricks. Right. Right? We, we got the tricks. We got we got the tricks and we got the cross. Mm-hmm. But we still know how to play conservative. Now, we're not going to pick the ball up and dance. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. But during that time, it yeah. kind of changed towards that. How did you feel about it? Yeah, but it ain't affect us because none of us did that. Me, Pep, Greg. You know, black mode, none of us, that didn't bother. And we, and we played with some of the guys who did that, right? Mm-hmm. And some of them guys, right, they do that on clown dudes. Right. But when we come in there. Real players. They, real players, they know. Mm-hmm. They know. Like, they can't dance today, right? <laughs> so, you know what I'm saying? Like, this, today, this ain't, you can't dance today. No, nah, I, was, I was at PG. Bone Collect, I think, came down here for the yeah. first time. Yeah. And I can honestly say you were probably the only person who was able to stay in front of me. Yeah. It wasn't none of that. Yeah, yeah. no. Nah. Yeah. 
right? It's, 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 and then I'll tell you a story, man, with Bone Collective, we was going out, we was going overseas. We was going, we, we and actually I have, a, I have a picture with man, Bone Collective, I'll send it to you. We was going overseas and we was practicing up boy, right? Mm-hmm. And matter of fact, maybe like six, seven months ago, he was in town. We, 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 we was at a great, you know, workout gym studio. And he said to me, he was like, yo, too, man, we got to check it up. I need to, I, I need to get back. Yeah. Because we was up, <laughs> not even from that time, we was up mm-hmm. with boy. He was checking me. I scored like seven straight mm-hmm. on him, mm-hmm. right? Seven straight, seven in a row. He like two, man. I, I need to get back, mm-hmm. right? So it's just certain styles make fights. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Even with Future, you was at the game of, of Coolidge, right? But we played against them. You dropped them out of bounds. Dropped them out of bounds, right? Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. I'd be right back. When they was on Hollow Brown on TNT. We play a UDC. Mm-hmm. You know, I'll be right back between the leg snaps, hit the J bar, everybody go crazy. Mm-hmm. That, right? was a, that, that game was overcrowded. Yeah, it was overcrowded, right? Mm-hmm. Right? So we're talking about really like doing instances, man. It's like, yo, like you can't dance today because you got some, it's, it's, you got a real live one coming at you. Coming, 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 coming at you, right? But, you know, we went on Sprite with Mixed Tours, Street Ball Circuit, 18 cities in 21 days. I mean, we beat everybody. We, we beat every city and state. We was on it with Jay-Z, Beyonce, Kanye, uh, Pharrell. Like, we, you know, with every case of the street ball stuff, we, we did some great things with the street ball also, man. We, man, I think Greg, myself, Pep, Victor Page, Black Mo, man, we, we, man, we've maxed out, mm-hmm. right? We maxed out street ball-wise. We maxed out, maxed out collegially, mm-hmm. but... Street balls is a part of who we are, right? Mm-hmm. It's the origin of where we really come from, right? In the alley, shooting on the crate. So we can never discredit that, though, right? But you always want to – it's been blessed to, to the game, for the game to evolve within us. Right. You follow what I'm saying? So I kind of want to – we're getting ready to finish up, but I kind of want to touch on a couple of things. So one thing that you've always mentioned, your friendship with Greg, your friendship with Black Mo, Victor Page, Pep Tyson, and – can you just kind of talk about how you guys kind of pushed each other going to run and shoot, going outside, running fives? Can you kind of talk about that? Because a lot of people don't know how much talent, how all that talent together kind of pushed and motivated each other, especially from high school all the way through your college years, through your street ball years, through your pro years. Can you talk on that? I, 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 I think to, to expound on that, man, we all had like one thing in common, man, that we all came from a place of poverty, mm-hmm. right? And we all had the same dream. So we already knew, man, if one of us made it, we all would make it, mm-hmm. right? And so we played against each other competition-wise and winning shoot, but it was never like no animosity, jealous. People really couldn't break us up. Mm-hmm. You, you you know, you, you're not better than him. You're not better than him. And one thing I say about all of us, man, like as a group, we were serious. Mm-hmm. But individually, we were kings amongst ourselves. Because mm-hmm. if you look at our whole crew, everybody went their way and did their own thing. Stood out. And by themselves, mm-hmm. right? So they didn't need the next man. Even when Black Mo went to West Texas and m he did his own thing. Greg did his own thing in West Virginia. Vic did his thing at uh, Georgetown. Georgetown. Mm-hmm. Pep got his championship at, at the D2 level, right? Mm-hmm. By itself. Me at SC. So we come together. And it's a force, but solo. Mm-hmm. You right? all stood on your own too. We all stood on our own. We all, we stood on our own ten toes, right? And so we were friends, man, and we had genuine, genuine love for each other, right? Mm-hmm. So it just was the fact that, man, we just created a bond, and we just went throughout the whole city. Sometimes Vic really wasn't with us all the time, you know. Vic, by whatever he do, mm-hmm. he do him. But you know, me, Greg, Black, Pap. Man, we cruise the town and go get some buck. We looking for it, right? Mm-hmm. Even going uptown, I mean, going up New Hampshire Avenue, uh, Tacoma with Dave Vanderpool, mm-hmm. right? The coach for the Timberwolves, mm-hmm. right? Uh, Riley, some good players that made all county. Keith Vini, Derma Clinton. Uh, even when Steve kind of got a little into the mix, mm-hmm. people come through there. Jason Muscuri, right? So going, it's us DC dudes going in there mm-hmm. and getting some of that good bump and they and they're getting that bump from us, right? And so and I think they talk I they were the first person I seen how to really play under control. Who's that? The the Maryland guys that I just named. That, right? little, that little crew. That little crew. That right? Moco crew. That Moco crew, right? Mm-hmm. And Riley I tell a story. Riley got at me so bad in the gym playing basic 
John Stockton basketball. Rally Inge. Rally Inge, right? Mm -hmm. and, I, and I always tell Rolly that, though, right? <laughs> I mean, it got at me. Mm -hmm. It got at me, right? But it was very basic. Mm -hmm. It wasn't none, none more than three dribbles. Bing, mm -hmm. bing, get to a spot. Great pass, great pass. Pull up. I'm talking about, man, got at me. Mm -hmm. And he always said, go over there, too, go over there, too. But I'm so transparent because you know why? It's about my development. Mm -hmm. right? You learn from it. Yeah, I learned. Everything was a learning. So now I said, like, whoa, that's a point guard. Mm -hmm. So you follow what I'm saying? But just just us, man. And then the thing about us, right, we under the city embraced us, mm -hmm. right? The city, I think during that time when we come through, right, you know, DC was known for what it was known for, right? Right. And I think we personified that energy, mm -hmm. right? At that time, we were those NBA guys, right? And you still had Mr. Kirk Smith rocking and rolling too, right? Mm -hmm. But the game was starting to shift and change. A little bit, right. A, a, a little bit mm -hmm. to that cross, yeah. bing, 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 mm -hmm. get really finish your man, right? Mm -hmm. And then the city embraced it. The city took us in, right? And so we all had the key to the city. Mm -hmm. It ain't nothing in the city that we didn't want. It's nothing in the city that we couldn't get. I mean, rent, get paid, need a car to do anything, man. The city, the city took us on and we embraced that. We relished in that. And like we, we took on the identity of the, of the district. So I was at the Kenner. I, I think you and Black Mo drove through in the car screaming, we want Allen. What, 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 I think he was a freshman. You remember that? I think he was hanging out the top of a car screaming out to the, to the Kenner League crowd. <laughs> yeah. Like, we want Allen. We yeah. want Allen. Like, did you ever get that Yo. matchup? After he got the college, uh, no, and again, right, right, and again, right, competition. That's my. That's what I'm saying. I get it. Yo, it's competition, right? It. You got, you got a guy. You got a guy. He's new to the city. New to the city. Put him. Some people put him at the top of them. At the food chain. Absolutely. So it's and and we just saw him, right? Yep. So we talking about right. Competition in, in that moment. In that moment. So did you ever get that matchup? Did you ever get the like, play? You know, you know, he didn't play locally. Well, he said it. From what I heard, he was going around playing for money. That's what I heard. I, I guess he never crossed your so, so, came so, across your line. So again, because Sheik, I think Sheik said him and AI was like two on two partners or some shit like that. Again, mm -hmm. me and Greg ain't get, get a phone call. Pep and Greg ain't get a phone call. Me and Pep ain't get a phone call. Mm -hmm. Pep and Vic ain't get a phone call. Vic and Greg ain't get a phone call. So who was he playing? Basically, what you're saying is I don't know what's going on with that, right? I don't know what's going on. I'm just saying, I don't know. Mm -hmm. what, I ain't discrediting anything with nobody's saying, mm -hmm. but I'm just saying, where it's getting thick at? Oh, yeah. You're not over the probably over the farm. You're not, you're, you're not in the urban coalition. You're not tapping the best. Players I, I'm, I'm just saying, right? right? Yeah. So I'm not discrediting at that time what the, what the guys, what the guys doing, right? Mm -hmm. So, but so you for you, any one on one games, big one on one games, well known players you took down. Nah, you know, I guess during my time, it really, one-on-one -on -one really wasn't. Big. Nah, right? Because yeah. I don't think it really, I don't know what it would really prove, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, you beat the matchup, you beat the guy one-on-one, -on -one, right? I mean, okay, guess what? What if you're skillfully better than the guy, and mm -hmm. then somebody back you down 10 times and beat you? Yeah, for the money. It, I mean, yeah. right? Two-on-two? -two? Yeah. Two-on-two -two games? Any big two-on-two? -on -two? Any for, big five on five games for the money? Yeah, but the games I played for the cash was was on some, some also some also a different tip, right? Some okay. guys I knew that had some cash that knew some little other guys, right? Mm -hmm. But it wasn't against nobody within the city, within the frames of they like that, y'all like that, y'all see somebody. Okay. Right? The kind of, you know, the kind of the kind of the kind of money games I played with some dudes I knew. I'm like, yo, too, it's, let's go get this money. They sweet. They want to go in the gym and play against my five. Got it. Right? And I mean. And we, we rocked. But as far as me matching up with guys in the town, it really wasn't about us matching up with guys in the town because for me, I, you know, we embrace the city, mm -hmm. right? Everybody's in, the, in in trying to make it out. So it's no really need to see see nobody like one on one or be able to like prove that point of like you better than this person. Everything is just competition. Got it. Right? Five on five. It's just competition, right? So I want to. I would never see it and say, "Yo, am I better than this guy one on one?" Right. That for really for, for me, that's minuscule. Right. That's not my thought process. Right. Mm -hmm. So I embrace what you do, mm -hmm. your skill set, your talent. I embrace what that guy does. Right. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, everyone's trying to make it. Right. So no one's better. For me, I'm not, you know, who's better than who. You yeah. just on any given day, it could be any it could be any it could be anybody's night. Got it. Right. So so that's just how that works. You know so I mean? great career. 
education, fell back on your degree, moved forward, got a master's. What's next for you? What are you doing? What do you see yourself in the next five years? What you got going on? Well, I got a I got a book that's coming out, right? Mm -hmm. That's kind of tailored my life. Okay. Like some of the same stuff that we discussed, you know, starting from day one all the way up. Um, surviving DC. Mm -hmm. I am more than my environment. Right. Right. Was that a title? Yes. Okay. So, you know, <laughs> Um, actually, well, that should be probably pub published by spring. But my thing is like independent publishing, or you? Uh, I haven't decided. Okay. Right. Mm -hmm. So you know, it just creating a platform and just being to help um, educators um, with youth development and how urban youth of America how they best learn mm -hmm. coming from um, poverty and traumatic experiences. Mm -hmm. Right. So being able to be a pillar to be able to bridge that gap from the youth to educators or like minds, okay. right? So I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna give you the secrets or even how to deal with me as I, I was as a kid coming from these experiences or even how to deal with this new age generation with their poverty and their traumatic experiences. Mm -hmm. You follow what I'm saying? So just being able to create a platform to be able to speak just about those things. You, you follow what I'm saying and just. So you have a book, yeah. but also uh, you mentioned you have also a nonprofit. Can you yeah. talk a little bit about that? I have a nonprofit, DC Youth Empowerment, right? Um, what we do is we serve at-risk youth from um, age seven to 15. Mm -hmm. We we do um, uh, emotional and social development. Mm -hmm. And age 16 to 24, we do like workforce development and like job placement. Okay. So, you know, one of the things we do with that program also, we, we teach teachers classroom behavior management strategies, right? To deal with- To the, deal with- Because something. of the kids that, who have some traumatic experiences. Yeah, experience yeah. or just emotional difficulties, right? Right. Or everybody got traumatic experience, but guess what? If I live anywhere positive to see that here, gun violence, gun shots, my people's got shot, my people's arrested, locked up, you know, my parents not around, you're gonna have some emotional difficulty. Mm -hmm. Right, so it's just and you may not know how to. Yeah, deal. just environmental learning, man. Yeah. So you you, you know you up against a lot when you come, when you be coming from the inner city environment, mm -hmm. right? And sometimes you kind of like need to know how to deal with a certain crew of population or the the child itself you need to understand some coping strategies that they, that they can rely on themselves. Mm -hmm. So just providing that information to both groups. Got it. Anything else you got going on? So you got a book, nonprofit. You seem very busy, man. You know, right now you're not in the coaching, so you, I guess you're gonna be going full blast to get yourself back together as far as playing. Yeah, and I've been I've been doing that pretty much. You know, working independently um, as we speak. So just taking some time off to really like just get my mind prepared when the new year kicks in and just going like full throttle and just creating that that brand of Gary Johnson and that that youth development brand. Mm -hmm. So that's where I'm at, right? You know, I still love the game, but. We don't embrace the game. The game has been big to me. It's been, it's done great things for me. I've been able to see the world, get degrees from it. So my thing now, man, is just severely just youth development, okay. right? You know, I tell a lot of people that, man, you know, Tutu's on the shelf. Mm -hmm. Everything is Gary Johnson. Well, everyone knows you as Tutu. So is that is that nickname something you got later in life or is it something that comes from? Yeah, that's a childhood name that childhood. my family gave me. Oh, so it's a family out, name. Out, out family the moon, right? Okay. You know, I, I, I mean. I, Any meaning behind it? Nah, you know, that's just a name, man. Like, I, I, you know, like, I've never heard my mom, anybody on my mom's side, anybody on my dad's side ever say Gary. And I'm named after my dad, but mm -hmm. it's too, too. It's always been too, too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I appreciate you coming in today and sitting yeah. down with me. Great interview. Yeah. Thanks, man. Oh, man. Pleasure.